Korean mouth. Well, confessions to was partially all my story. <laughs> uh, part two. Part two. Mm. Okay. But that part one that you talking about was just like me, just thinking of what could possibly be happening if you know to guide us and. Usher's position. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Which you prefer, one or two? Because I have this debate all the time with like real R&B heads. And of course, two is the smash. But I think Confessions 1 might be better as time has went. Um, from not a hit record standpoint, just from a, a music standpoint. I mean, the story in... in Because the first version is called All Bad. It's not called Confessions. That's what it... That's, you know, it's mm -hmm. called All Bad. So mm. the, the All Bad... The story of All Bad, I think, is better than Two. But Two was just so, you know, deliberate about, you know, a guy having a girlfriend, getting a girl pregnant, and, you know, it ain't much you can, mm -hmm. ain't much wiggle room in there. But this, every time I was in L.A., I was with my ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. All It's so many layers of that, that you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, I just was running away with it. Like, it was like... Oh, I can say this too. Oh, I can say this so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then how many times have you had to, to lie to the woman in your personal life that, nah, it was just lyrics. I, I was talking shit. That wasn't true. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, I think, well, let me take that back. <laughs> take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely say, babe, that was, come on, I was just writing. That was just for the art. <laughs> Never for other people. Me, yeah. My lyrics, I have had to say that like mm. you know i forgot i'll be rapping sometime yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can do it. it's easier to do it for <laughs> other artists you can be like i'm just writing but when it's your record yeah it's like nah come yeah, on you yeah, know so that it was, was my record yeah and people were like so yeah you was doing what yeah and i'm like uh i thought i was writing for usher <laughs> just throw, just throw Usher under the bus. Like, nah, I think he's kind of yeah, a piece yeah, of shit. Yeah, so I yeah. try to get into this world of his head. Like, <laughs> babe, come on, you know I me. Get lost doing this. Yeah, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, mean, I just, you know. Well, let's go to. The, let's talk about the beginning of of JD because a lot of people don't. I mean, I'm sure you talked about it before, but a lot of people don't know that you actually lived in New York for a while. Yeah, um, at like 13, 14, 15, I stayed in Brooklyn. Eastern Parkway. What high school you went to? Oh, you from Crown Heights? Why Atlanta keep trying to claim them? Between Notion Street and New York Street. I didn't. I didn't go to high school. I was, I actually had a tutor. Okay. And I was staying with actually Chad Elliott. Mm -hmm. Um. And Chad actually lived in Brooklyn, and that's where I was basically staying with him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's what I actually, you know, um, that was a good learning crash course for me mm -hmm. to be in New York at that period of time and for me to be that young to be able to stay there and just see what was going on and just to be around um you know it's a thing when you don't have money and you like i guess you're poor mm -hmm. um you see a lot and you don't get into no trouble because nobody want to rob you you could just go wherever you want to go mm -hmm. you know what i mean I, so i got i got opportunity to, you know to go to fort green mm. Uh, get you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't go there now, though. Get haircuts from Knapps. Oh wow, it's uh, really nice in Fort Greene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I, I, you know, I got chased by the Decepticons. Wow, uh, that's a throwback. How do you put that in an R&B record? <laughs> <laughs> the nobody even the knows metaphor was the ex girl nobody chasing. Nobody knows what I'm <laughs> talking about. Cause I, so yeah, I think yesterday, but yesterday we was we had this group chat with Bow Wow and all the homies and. He tried to post a picture talking about how I put, like bad dress days or whatever, and I had on all polo, mm -hmm. like, polo to mm. head to toe, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Nigga, I'm a Decepticon." He ain't know what he you was, was talking like, about. Yeah, yeah. never and heard of low life. Transformers nothing. Transformers in here, I'm right? Like, <laughs> you keep forgetting who you're talking to. Yeah, like, I forgot. You. Yeah, he definitely don't. No, yeah, you don't know. I don't know nothing about that. Yeah, all the all the low heads, the I low mean, life. A bunch of people don't know. They probably listening yeah. right now. Like what? Yeah, they don't even know what fab. Low so in case you ain't know so what mm -hmm. that actually mean right at right. the end of the day yeah. so, that's some real Brooklyn booster shit super Brooklyn mm -hmm. I ain't know what it was by the way I just I, just, I learned like this like oh yeah. shit you yeah. gotta go yeah because I mean here in Atlanta we wore a lot of polo mm -hmm. and polo was like the thing here so 
you know, me going to New York and having on polo, mm-hmm. and and I was little. Yeah, niggas was trying to get me. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna get robbed for some polo. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that was currency. <laughs> yeah. well, then, what what brought you back to Atlanta at that point? I mean, I was I was still I lived here. I just mm. was I was just with Chad, and I mean my my you know I was like Johnny Five at at that age. I was just like. If it was hip hop, I had to be right there wherever it was at. So it was some hip hop going on. I was mm-hmm. uh, so when I my mother, I was like, "Yo, can I go stay with Chad?" My mom was like, "Yeah, go ahead." Mm-hmm. I like, right, well, I'm out. Right. And I went and I stayed up there and I and I and I ended up liking it. I wanted to be there more and I just stayed. You know what I mean? And and it's crazy because like I said, the it's almost like Slum Dog Millionaire for me because it's like the things that started happening to me after that, I knew what to do based on me living in mm. You know what I mean? So, mm. or I knew what the answers was based on me being there. So it was like, it's really weird like that type of situation. You think that more on a business side or a music side of that time in, in Brooklyn and how that resonated with you? Um, was I? I'm saying from taking that time in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. How did it go into the music moving forward? How it go into the business as far as reading people, being in New York City, and um, being in a whole new city as far as music goes as well, and coming back to Atlanta. I mean, really, for me, it was but like I guess I I ended up building relationships that I didn't even know that I was. That's what I'm saying. I didn't even know that I was going. I could. I, I mean, you know, I was trying to produce like I think fifteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, probably like, yeah. At fifteen, I, me and Chad was making beats, and well, we was trying to make beats. We didn't even have no equipment. We just had records, mm-hmm. right? We just had a whole bunch of records. His mom had records, and um, I think it was like Downtown Record Store. Is that the name of it? Or was it either yeah, it was Downtown Records or something like that. It was a record store in Brooklyn that that's where I first saw a break beat. And I saw the breakbeat collection mm. and I bought the collection and mm. it's still in there somewhere right there. But that's when I just start my love for like, oh, I'm gonna make beats. But I ain't really I still ain't had no drum machine. Um and I used to just like play the records and just like think in my head, like, we gonna sample this. And um like I said, oddly enough, it was just be like I just meet somebody, like I meet different DJs or this that person and then um once I started making records I had these 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 relationships already just that, that was just right there based on me being a, you know mm. being a young dude um so um I guess it worked out for both business and and you know what I mean and 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 on the artist side what uh, what were y'all listening to at that time I mean I was listening to like whatever was you know the radio was you know, I guess BLS, <laughs> BLS, Mr. Magic, Rap Attack. Mm-hmm. Um, I never missed that. Uh, um, you know, I was in the house tape taping the radio shows, and um, so anything, everything that was, everything that was coming out, I was listening to. It was like, like I said, I was just a sponge. I, it, it was never like it wasn't one hip hop record that I didn't know. Mm. One one hip hop record that came out that I wasn't like up on, um, even like like and, and like it's it's weird because like I said even with the whole like I started DJing around that same time like about fifteen. Where it was like house parties or no, I never DJ real like okay just I just, just messing with myself. equipment. I'm, yeah, I'm a DJ. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, DJ well, JD. DJ, me and Chad was DJing in the house. And um, living on Eastern Parkway, I learned Jamaican records that I would have never learned mm-hmm. here in yeah, Atlanta. Of like, we yeah. don't we don't have that, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, um, the main I think the the biggest record when I stayed in Brooklyn was Koof. Mm. Um, they don't know nothing about that. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't know that about the biggest cool. song. That's you we go outside. Sometimes I'm at the egg, I'm the egg. I'm like, what the hell is this? Song? That was the shit. Yeah. Every block, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. So you know, but that's what I'm saying. So all of this stuff is like, 
these are all these little pieces that I didn't actually know that I was going to have to, that I, that I could use or, you know, or what was going to happen with me with a producer. But, um, it was just, it definitely was a, um, a crazy learning, I mean, school basically. Mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And were you full, full hip hop, 15 year old JD at that time? Yeah. Not even thinking R and B would even be a path for you? Nah. Uh, uh, never. <laughs> Which is crazy. What what sparked that R and B part of your brain? Because I could even see some of those Jamaican records. As much as a lot of those breakbeat stuff in <coughs> old dancehall stuff is hip hop, a lot of that melodic shit is really from R and B. It is. I mean, you know, it was crazy about the 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 R and B side. I don't. I I didn't approach R and B like R and B. Mm. I approached it like I could write songs. So I'm like. You know, and I wrote, I, can, I write hooks. So I write the hooks for the some rap records. So I'm like, if I write a hook, I could write, I could, I could possibly write a song. Mm. But I never, I never was doing it prior to trying to do it. Mm. Um, so once Criss Cross came out and they was, they so big and Babyface told me that, you know, I wasn't shit if I couldn't do it again. I was like, well, all right, I got to figure out <laughs> how to do something else. <laughs> so my mind started just going into like, okay, I'm going to try to make an R&B record. And I was I was fearless at that time too. Mm -hmm. um, when you don't have a bunch of hits, you don't care if you don't make none. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's interesting. But I mean, jump at that time. Yeah, but that was well, just hold more. On. Yeah, how, we, how do we get to that? How, do you, how does Criss Cross even come into play? Um... From the Eastern Parkway to Criss Cross. Yeah. Oh, from the Eastern Parkway to Criss Cross. Yeah. Well, basically, <laughs> basically on some weird, crazy shit, Chad and Jermaine was basically Criss Cross. Mm. Um, he's light-skinned, I'm dark-skinned. It's the same thing. It's almost the exact same thing, right? Wow. Um, we's best friends. We've been, each other, been around each other since I was 12. I met Chris and Chris when they was 12 and 11. Mm. Um... I feel like something subconsciously, when I saw them, my subconsciousness made me say, that's you and Chad. Mm -hmm. And you and Chad didn't ever work out as rappers. Mm -hmm. You should, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like something said that, but I didn't say it to myself. But I mean, when you look at it now, that's what it actually looks like. Um, but so from Eastern Parkway, I basically started. Like I said, Chad, Chad was showing me records and this, that, and the third. We start messing with the records, and then when we came back. Um, I came back to Atlanta. I started trying to go in the studio with producers, that or guys who had equipment, because I still didn't have no money. I didn't have no equipment, but I had these ideas and I had these records. Mm. And um, I go to the studio and I'd be like, "Yo, listen." By the way, if if the first person I went in the studio with, if they would have listened to me. I would have been responsible for sampling, damn near sampling records, period. Because that's that's all I wanted to do. I didn't have a mind to like make music. Mm -hmm. My mind was, we're going to take this and we're going to rap over this. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put this part in and we're going to put this part in. Like, and Who was this artist? Can we huh? say the name? Huh? Can we, can we no, say no, the I name? Do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to uh, piss on Prince Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that because I mean I don't want I, I you know but that 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 them not understanding because it wasn't really like a it wasn't really like a thing that they was like JD you don't know what the fuck you talking about or maybe it was because I was young but at the same time it was like um it was unusual for probably a fifteen year old kid to be saying like yo mm -hmm. let's take these people's music. Mm -hmm and let's loop it and let me rap over it. And to them at that time, in 19, probably 89, yeah, probably 89, that sounded like stealing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Complete 100%. thievery, right? Yeah. So- And no musical integrity. Yeah, <laughs> not, not one bit. So, so, you know, I would go one place and I'm like, listen, I want you to loop this record up. By the way, I didn't even know what that meant. I ain't had no drum machine, so I'm not really even knowing. I'm just like, I want this to play the whole time. I like right. this part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the dude was like, we can't take that music, but I'm going to make something that sound like it. 
And I'm like, all right, let me give you a chance to see if you're going to make something sound like it. Mm-hmm. Make something. I'm like, nah, that ain't it. That ain't it. This that is a 15-year-old Jay saying this. Yeah. This ain't, that ain't that's, it. That's not, that's not it. Yeah. That's, not what, that's, not, that's not the sound I want. Mm-hmm. And then I had Chad there, and we both were like, nah, mm-hmm. we supposed to sample this. Mm-hmm. Now we don't know we we don't know what we talking about because yeah. I don't know what sampling is. I like I said I never even had no I ain't had no equipment. Mm-hmm. So um, something happened in that process where and this was records that me and Chad was trying to make. We was trying to be artists, mm-hmm. and in that process that didn't work. Mm-hmm. Me and Chad didn't work as artists. Um, records came out on the independent, but they ain't do nothing. Um, but I mean, at the same time, I was doing the exact same thing. Me and him was rapping. I was writing hooks. Um, and I was writing, but I I didn't have the production part yet. And so I didn't like, I didn't really love the music. So um, these girls that I met on tour with Houdini when I was on the Fresh Fest, mm-hmm. um, they was like, uh, we want to, we, we a group. And I'm like, y'all a group. And I'm like, well, y'all should let me produce you. I never yeah, produced at, a at record 12. ever yeah, in my yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Never. Yeah. Just I, dancing I, on I stage. straight said this. This is what I said. And they was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you should let me produce you. We, you go back to Atlanta. You should let me produce you. Now, I was thinking already I'm, back to Atlanta. I'm like, listen, they got a car. They they older. Mm-hmm. They can come pick me up. They can take me places. To, but you, you know, don't I have nothing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like I'm just trying to scam that's, that's my way through. Young man's door, brain. Right? Yo, they got a car. Yeah, yeah. They got a car. that's all. That's all that matters. Yeah, you gonna come pick me up? We go get some food. Whatever, yeah. whatever it is, right? Yeah. So I'm seeing all of this, but we on tour. So yeah, I come back to Atlanta, and on the I think probably like at the third year because I went on tour for three years. It was the 84, 85, and 86. So. In like 87, 88 is when I came back to Atlanta and started trying to focus on making this Silk Times Leather album. Yeah. Um, and I went in the studio again with no equipment and had an idea that I can now say Eddie Irons is the guy who... Um, who actually had the equipment. He had a studio here in Atlanta called 2560. And um, he allowed me to come in the studio. He was listening to what I was saying. We didn't get it right, but he was getting closer. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? He was at least trying to put my my vision of taking records and put it into play. And um, we did it good enough where we got them a demo deal, mm-hmm. right? So I wrote all their raps, um, and then I was doing the music with Eddie, and then we got a demo deal with Warner Brothers. And um, when they got the demo deal, that's when I first got my first little check, mm. I think. Yeah, so we finished, once, we, once we've got the demo, we got the demo deal, uh, we went back in the studio and actually started working on a real album. And I don't know how I pulled it off, but I did it. You know what I mean? The album wasn't nothing, it didn't do that, didn't do nothing. But it sold enough for me to make, I think, $20,000. Mm-hmm. And I bought a lot of money all equipment. It's a lot of money at that time. Yeah, yeah. fuck it. For me, I was 16. Yeah, it's right. fucking crazy. Right. I was like $20,000. I never got to go to work ever. This is what, eight, <laughs> this, this is 89? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so I, was, I, I got that and I bought all equipment. At that point, that's when I got, I, I want to say I got an MP. And that's when I started getting into like the equipment that I needed to do what I was supposed to be doing. So yeah, so at 16, I had the, I started making beats and I'm making beats, making beats. And I think, I wanna say, the Silk Times Leather um, project had come out. It was doing okay, it wasn't, like I said, it didn't do amazing, but it did enough to get like a little bit of notoriety for them. I got a little bit of money and they got into Jet Magazine. And when they got in Jet Magazine, they had a full little pitch in there. And that's what got the Chris's mom to notice me at the, at the mall. Okay. They, if she wouldn't have saw that Jet Magazine, she I probably wouldn't have even hooked up with Chris and Chris. Because wow. the, the DJ from Silk Times Leather was with me. 
And she was like, I just saw you in Jet Magazine. They weren't thinking about me. So they start thinking about her. They thought, okay, well, this got to be legit because I seen her in the mm-hmm. magazine. Um, that's the only thing that probably like, that I, definitely that saved me and got me connected with Chris and Chris. But basically, I was just walking through the mall. This is Lenox Square? No, um, Greenbrier. I went to Greenbrier Mall to get get some sneakers, I think, and um, just a humbug. And Chris and Chris was in the mall. And like I said, I'm just looking at them and I'm thinking like, you guys must be like on Nickelodeon or something like, cause I, I, I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm super hip hop by the way. I'm so I don't like Nickelodeon. Right. I don't like nothing. Yeah. I don't like nothing that's remotely close to Disney or right. any of that. Right? right. So, um, but I keep looking at these kids and the girls in the mall, like watching them. I'm like, so I'm asking people, I'm like, who is this? And people are like, I don't know. And they go to the, so I'm, I'm actually at this point following these kids around the mall. And they go to the cookie company. They used to be like the cookie company in the Thank God you was a kid too. Thank God you was a kid too. And and so yeah, so I'm following these kids around. I'm, I'm, I'm a kid too, so I don't you know why looking crazy. I'm fucking with you. Yeah. Um, and they go to the cookie counter, and the girls that's working at cookie company, they freaking out. They screaming. They giving them free cookies. All, all off the look. They not famous. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, is this like, is, is this got to be a joke or something? Yeah. Like, what's going on right now? Right. It felt like I was in the Twilight Zone because I'm like, nobody else around me is paying no attention to this, mm-hmm. right? Like, the girl that's with me, Dola Mix from Silk Times Leather, she ain't saying like, yo, look at that. Mm-hmm. It seemed like nobody's paying no attention to this right. but mm-hmm. me, and this shit is happening. Like, mm-hmm. so I'm sitting here, I'm looking, I'm like. Somebody got to tell me something. So, first of all, I'm mad because I ain't got no free cookies. That's right. that's that's, <laughs> that's first. One, that's yeah. first because I'm like, yeah. I'm not even really. I'm not because it ain't it ain't hit me yet that they could be a group. Right. I'm just I'm thinking they just somebody already. Yeah. Not nothing about me being like I could write for these kids or nothing. I don't have right. that even in my brain. Right. I'm trying to figure out how she in the magazine. I'm with her. Y'all giving them free cookies <laughs> and we should be getting the right, free right, shit. Right, right, this right. what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. And uh I heard that's why you're a vegan to this day. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I should be. Uh I so I go I go over to them and I'm like, yo, what what do y'all do? And they was like, What? I said, What y'all do? And he's like, What you mean when we do? I'm like, do, what do y'all we do? We get free cookies. We, we, yeah, we go to school. They're like, shit, <laughs> we just cool. I'm like, yeah. y'all just cool. Yeah. And like, yeah. I said, well, y'all don't rap? And they said rap. Like, rapping was whack. Yeah. By the way, this is the moment in time when I will never ever see in life because every little young motherfucker think he can rap now. Right. This was a time period when kids didn't want to be rappers. Mm-hmm. I feel like adults. Hove talks about that all the time. Like he was like, I didn't. I was a secret that I was a rapper because rappers weren't really cool at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess right. <laughs> so I said this to them. I'm saying like, do y'all rap? They said rap. Like we don't want to rap. Does that? Who yeah, does yeah, that? Was yeah. like, and at that point, that's when I was like, oh shit, y'all don't even make music. Mm-hmm. So then I'm like, so why are these girls giving y'all free? Shit. They just cool. And they like, 100 percent That's what he said. He's like, we just cool. They love us. I'm like, mm-hmm. they love y'all. Right. For what? Right. <laughs> now you sound like a hater, JD. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm but just an inquisitive saying, like, way of on some I'm, star power I'm, shit. Yeah, like yeah, y'all, yeah. like, there's gotta be something. <laughs> like they right. just love you. And they 12 and, telling and, you that. Huh? And they 12 years old telling you that. We yeah, just cool. and I'm like, what? Yeah. What's yeah. going on? So at that point, I'm like, okay, these little Bastards, they like, yeah. that's yeah. how I'm feeling. Like this yeah. little dude talking to me, like he's yeah, like he got all. Of, but by the way, they was fresh. Right, they had on new sneakers. They was in the mall getting sneakers and getting free shit. Right, clothes on the right way at that time though. Clothes on the right way. <laughs> mm-hmm. They was fly. They was fly kids. They had boxes. They shit was cut. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was just like, all I right. can see how back then that would appeal to the young girls that work in the mall. Like, oh, they 
some cute little boys. Like, nah, you know, you see, you don't, you really don't understand what I'm saying. It was if like you crazy. You would have saw this. Yeah. You would be bugging yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you and him got a mm. show. Yeah. You got cameras. Yeah. I just yeah. walked through the mall. No yeah. one stopped me. Yeah, nobody stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Not one person. <laughs> okay. Right, right. If you seen two little boys. Yeah, yeah. And they don't do nothing. And they, you never seen them nowhere. Right. And you'd be like, mm-hmm. you you seen me? Yeah. And they'd be like screaming. I'm not saying like they was freaking out. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then Chris was like, yeah, we come here every week. This is our hood. This is where we at. They know us. And I'm just like, what? Mm. And at that point, I froze and my mind just started going. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, if I find a song mm-hmm. for these kids... And mm-hmm. these girls is acting like this already. Mm-hmm. They gonna be the biggest shit in the world. Mm-hmm. I said this in the mall. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find the song, but I said it in the mall. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I, you know, I'm like, well, y'all should give me y'all number. And they was like, for what? And that's when they was looking at me like, yo, we going? What you want my number for? Right, <laughs> right, right. I'm like, I want to make some records with y'all. Mind you. I don't have no records. I mean, sometimes leathers, whatever, but yeah. I never made no. I never made a male rap record besides me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I don't actually even know what I'm talking about when I'm telling them. I've been making songs for girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> Writing female lyrics. Mm-hmm. Um, and they 11 and 12. So I still, I don't even know that yeah, life no yeah. more, right? Yeah, so you I don't just know had what, to do something. Yeah, yeah I just free, was like, free cookie wraps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, yeah whatever. Yeah, <laughs> right. like free cookies. Yeah. Um, I, so I get their number and I'm like, we just start hanging out. And they start, they start coming to my house. And at first, you know, um, I couldn't figure out how I was going to get them to rap. And then it, it hit me. Um, one day we was in the car and we was playing, I think we was playing Ice Cube, um, America's Most Wanted album. And they knew all the lyrics. And it, without me asking, I was playing and I was, and they knew all the lyrics. And I was looking in the review and I could see them back there in the back seat, like, I heard payback some motherfucker, nigga. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. Shoot, like a goddamn, I'm like, they act like rappers. Mm-hmm. They know the lyrics. So that's why I'm start, I'm talking to myself like, if I write a song that they like, mm-hmm. they and can they, deliver it. They rap yeah, it like yeah. they doing Ice Cube. Yeah. Shit might work. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, JD, you ain't Ice Cube, though. Right. Right. <laughs> but, but at the same time, neither was they. So... <laughs> Uh, but you know, I'm saying that that's a part yeah. that I try. I left out. I'm like, yeah. well, if I write a song yeah, like Ice Cube, yeah, yeah, very yeah. few people are <laughs> to this day. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So, uh, I I I should have thought about that part because that part did. It took a long time for them to get to like what I was writing. Mm-hmm. But that's when you that, overthink. Th- huh? if, you, if you really overthought it and thought I'm not Ice Cube, yeah, you wouldn't have got there. Well, I mean, you had. I had to come up. I had to say that part because. Yeah. They would have been the first song. They was like, mm-hmm. "What is this?" Yeah. Right, literally, and um, it's so wild because I have so much stuff that's going on at this time that I'm telling y'all this story. This is, I think, in the same week that Chris and Chris come to my house and we start making records. Actually, start. And I start figuring out how I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, This guy named Ian Burt that's from Atlanta comes to my house and he says, y'all, I got this girl I want you to meet. Mm -hmm. She just came from out of town. Uh, She talented. I think she, she, I think she a star. We need to do something with her. Now, once again, my house is just like, I got equipment, but I ain't really got no outlet. Mm-hmm. I don't know why Ian brought this girl to my house, but mm-hmm. he did. And I mean, I guess, you know, whatever. The universe brought him over there. Mm-hmm. The girl was left eye. The left eye comes to my house mm-hmm. and she ends up, she's from fresh from Philly. 
She don't have nowhere to stay, so she ends up staying in my closet, basically. Wow. At my house. Mm -hmm. Um, So basically all of this is going on in my bedroom. I got Chris and Chris in my room. I got this girl in the closet named Left Eye. Me and Ian talking. All this in my bedroom. My mother, the door's closed. My mom don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, so when I meet Left Eye and I see what's going on with her, I start trying to like make everybody work. Mm-hmm. So then I got this crazy idea. I'm like, I'm a sample. Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney. <laughs> and I'm going to make the girl is mine. And you and Chris going to argue over Left Eye. <laughs> Uh-huh. I yeah. can see, I can hear Left Eye cursing both of them yeah. out right now. No, no, listen, it was, <laughs> I, this is I I tried it. It was it's crazy because like I said, the idea of samples and the way I was trying to do things, this was this was this was ten years ten years before Kanye. Mm-hmm. This was ten years before. Just Blaze. Mm-hmm. What I'm what I'm talking about. Right. I'm literally saying this. I think you under that. And I tried time. it. Mm-hmm. I was trying it. I just I I, I didn't know it wasn't right. Yeah. But I knew that's what I wanted to you do. Can hear I knew it. You can I was hear it. I knew it was that was supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Right. And I had you know I sampled the girl is mine. Dun, 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 and I had it, but the song was just so like. Um, <laughs> super cheesy song mm-hmm. for a rap record, but the idea was there. Mm-hmm. Um, but they ain't love the idea. Chris, Chris was just like they did it, but it was just like whatever, right? Mm-hmm. And that was like the beginning of us trying to get into it. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I wrote some more records for them, and I started realizing, like, okay, once again, back to the Ice Cube thing. It's like I gotta make records that these kids actually. That feel like it's them. Yeah, can relate right? to it. Yeah, um, and I think that's where I started getting my writing chops, really, really together because I start understanding that when you write music, you gotta write for the person. Yeah, mm-hmm. different perspective. You know what I mean, yours. The, the person has to feel like it's them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I woke up one morning and I was like, okay. Cause like I said, I wasn't, I was, I was hip hop, super hip hop. No, I don't want no music. I don't want no keyboards, none of that. Mm-hmm. I'm sampling. I'm just trying to sample. <clears throat> so I had turntables, and I had, um, and I kept thinking about Ice Cube. I'm thinking about Ice Cube. I'm saying like, okay, I gotta make these kids a record like Ice Cube. Mm-hmm. So then I took, I took, I Easy E, Boys in the Hood. And then um, Ice Cube had this song, his album, where it go, little boys and girls, they all love me. Come sit on the lap. Well, he had that. So um, I took the little boys, and then I put boys in the hood from EZ, and mm-hmm. I was doing that in, on the turntables. Mm-hmm. So then it was like, little boys in the hood, little, little, little boys in the hood. And I'm like, oh. Wouldn't go over well in 2021. This is a song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Little boys in the mm-hmm. hood, mm-hmm. and then I start thinking about what I could write about. So now I start asking them questions about what they see and what's going on. And I start thinking about the the, the movie uh, Boys in the Hood, mm-hmm. where the kids like you want to see a dead body, mm-hmm. and how those kids actually was the ones that were seeing all the murder shit mm-hmm. before everybody else, right? Yeah. So I start thinking about how little boys in the hood actually. S- their vision of what's going on in the hood, you never actually hear that perspective, right? right? right. For sure. Mm-hmm. So, um, I wrote that song. That was a song. So I start going off that. I'm like, I'm going with this. And when they heard it, I seen their eyes light up like, yeah, that's us. Mm-hmm. You saying something, that's what we want to talk yeah. about. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I, at that point, I knew they was going to rap it way better. Mm-hmm. And they did. They rapped the lyrics better than than they did the other songs. They sounded like they really wanted to do this. They mm-hmm. was acting like rappers. Mm-hmm. And um, that song, I thought that song was going to be their yeah. smash, Little Boys in the Hood. So I finished that demo, and I sent the demo out to Rough House. Okay. And they called back like, yeah, we want to sign them. And I was like, oh, shit. 
And at this point, there isn't like the the kid rapper hasn't existed yet no. at all. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean me. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. That then yeah, turned into yeah, Chris yeah, Ross. No, yeah. yeah. Nobody. Me and Chad. Um. But yeah, that's just that was the beginning of that. Um. I think like ninety one. Um. I I just want to quickly interrupt because you just saying Left Eye was living in your crib. Yeah. It's, it's just it's wild. crazy. It was crazy. So where is Left Eye at this point? Because of course your focus is crisscross. But what is Left Eye doing? At this time, who is is Rico around at this time? Is T Boz around at this time? What is nah? So, so Left Eye was still part, Left Eye was really like pro pre so so death, right? Because mm. none of I mean, you know, my mixtapes was called by the way, I was DJing mixtapes, I would sell mixtapes in school, but I wasn't like DJing clubs or whatever. Mm. Um, but my mixtapes was called so so death mixtapes, mm. um, and you know, left eye, she was down. She was at the house. She was actually really like instrumental in helping me figure out the backwards jeans and getting the clothing right. Mm. Um, because we used to just try crazy shit all the time and mm-hmm. be around each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so really she was she was not a part of what was going on with Chris Cross, but she was just a support you know, part of the support team. Mm-hmm. And she just was around. We was figuring out, blah, blah, blah. Then Ian um, met another girl named Crystal. And he found t Boz. I don't know how he did this. And then he thought about putting these girls together. Yeah. And um, the first group, TLC, was called Second Nature. And they was basically my group. Mm-hmm. Um, and once he got T buys, I did a demo on. I did a demo on them, on T buys and and, le- and left I basically at my house, and um, I'm trying to get their demo, mm-hmm. but also knowing that crisscross thing is moving. Yeah, and I'm six seventeen. Mm-hmm. That's insane at this point, right? And how old are they? Fuck. Who Chris and Chris is eleven and twelve, and, and I'm T Boz and Left Eye at that time left, around. She's probably seventeen, eighteen mm-hmm. years old. When Jump drops, and I told you last time I was here, I said that to me is probably low key the greatest diss record ever. <laughs> People don't view it that way, but that was a diss record. It was. It was going at another bad creation. Yeah. I was young enough to know because I was in. That was my. I wore my clothes backwards in the Bronx. That was my era. It yeah. Still does to this day. Yeah, but a lot of people don't. They don't attribute that as a diss record. Yeah. And I don't know why, but you said because ABC probably never responded, maybe. Nah, well, I, I, I feel like, you know, it was it's interesting because it was the it was the Eminem type diss record. Mm-hmm. In which I don't believe people really look at Eminem records as diss records, mm-hmm. right? When you talk about greatest diss songs and I never hear people talk about Eminem dissing in sync and Britney Spears right. and yeah, third. Right. I feel like that's what the crisscross thing was because ABC was looked at as an R&B group mm-hmm. and they weren't rappers. Yeah. It looked like, oh, you rapper boys is trying to just yeah, pick on these R&B yeah, yeah. dudes. Yeah, like, yeah. Why don't y'all go with Daz Effects or something? Right. <laughs> Daz Effects, wow. But what was that? Where did that come from, though? Like, why did, what, why did, why was those lyrics in that record? That's just, that's what I felt like needed to happen. Um, I you just felt, wanted to go at ABC. Well, I just felt like, I felt like, um, I wanted to make sure that Chris and Chris was established as rappers. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want them to come off like, like I said, I felt like, especially me at that time, I was, you know, mm-hmm. no shoestrings in my, I was walking around here like super duper B-boy. Yeah. Like, so I, all I could think about was like, I'm, we're going to diss somebody. Yeah. <laughs> somebody can really get it. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You know, that was what it was. Yeah. I was, you know, and it was like, it just felt like the thing to do. I don't know why. So they just called it straight just because you just felt like somebody got to get it. Yeah, I mean, and, it, and, and you know, like I said, I felt like it was a, a era where these two artists was like young. Mm-hmm. So it was going to be something that you really paid attention to. I just was trying to find a, you know, yeah. thing. It wasn't really like. It wasn't no real beef. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Um, it was Crown just, Heights in them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't no real beef. It was just like a, let's set this tone. Yeah. Let's make sure that people know the difference between you 
and them. Mm-hmm. And the only the, the way to do that is to act like rappers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And by the way, all I was listening to was, God damn, I'm glad y'all set it up. Yeah. It used to be hard. Yeah. Nice. That's all I was listening to. Yeah. Like, every day. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I think Jack and Four Beats came out right before I made Jump. Mm. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I'm yeah. like, Ice Cube and the Lynch Mob. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, we gotta make some shit like this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I... I Probably me. I was just like lost in, in this world yeah. with Ice Cube dissing yeah. everybody. Yeah. But that's what it was. And and then Jump, like I said, I was Jump was the last song I made for Criss Cross on that album. How do we transition into more of the JD as an artist, label owner, so so deaf? How does that that transfer? If you gotta uh, take it, take it. That's just Usher. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Where are you at? I'm in the studio. Where are you at? I'm in the studio. I'm coming to you right now. I'm doing get podcast a, right get now. Get a fourth mic. And they can hear you. What podcast? Who you doing? Nigga, I'm fucked up. Nigga, what's up, nigga? <laughs> I'm gonna pull up and talk my shit, nigga. Oh, really oh. Fuck that. get the fourth mic. I wanna pull up. I wanna talk my shit. Who the Who's podcast doing? with? <laughs> I was having a bad fucking day. My baby mother called me this morning with some fuck shit. Oh, never mind. I'll take it back. Man, fuck that, nigga. I'm going up. Betty, this me. I'm going up. <laughs> I'm pulling out all the cars. Maybach's out tonight. Lambo trucks out tonight. Nigga, I'm pulling up. Nigga. That's what happens to your baby mother. <laughs> yes, yes. We we throwing 100,000, nigga. All that. Okay, I, I'm doing. Uh, I'm on the way, nigga. All right. Get my mic ready. I'm ba- talking. All right, nigga, bye. No, no, no. Bye. You just said you was on the way. <laughs> you come and come on. Don't worry about it. Come on. You can see what you give. Come on. I'm in the car, dog. Y'all bitches. Fix you, you're going to be, you're going to, you're going to be on the, you're going to be on the podcast. They hear you. <laughs> No, I don't like the tone of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't like that tone. Uh, hey, listen, it's only going viral if I pull up and join the motherfucking interview. And I'm going eight right now. Daddy, you in the, you in the group chat. You know what the fuck I'm in dealing with. Stop. You I'm doing it. The- <laughs> hey, Daddy, I'm bringing a million dollars cash. <laughs> Can this be the trailer? <laughs> hey, yo, 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 I'm, I'm going to call you. Yo, yo, if, if you come and come on, man, I got to finish. Mel, tell me if you, you, you cap, you cap, that's what you're doing. You capping. You capping. Well, you better hurry up, man. I got, look, look, listen, look, look, man. It's a whole crew, I'm, we know a whole crew of people here. They got to fit. Are you coming to do that? He's more than welcome to come. <laughs> oh my god. Man. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, come on. Now, let's be out. Hey, I'm on the way. Bye, I'm man. Way. Bye. Pull up in the Maybach, nigga. Bye. All right, bye. Oh my god. All right. I'm sweating. I'm sweating this shit out. I'm in the house. I'm overlooking the whole ass of the city. Nigga, I'm on my like eight shot. They trying to take me out, Daddy. They trying to take me out. You trying to take you out. All right, bye. Bye, man. Bye, man. Come on. Bye. All right. Keep rolling, by the way. We're not going to pretend like that didn't happen, and then we're going to be like, so tell us about crisscross. Yeah, no. All right. <laughs> we'll continue with it, but we still rolling. Okay. Jeez. So how, how do oh we get God. to that guy? Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what my life is like every day. Yeah. All right. Um, you feel like you're a parent all the time because you've worked with yeah. so many yeah. like younger artists? Not just young artists, adults. You yeah. know, the next car might be Usher saying something crazy. Yeah. It's like it's everybody. Mm-hmm. Daniel, it's everybody. Well, everybody. we feel like we're Daniel's father too. Huh? Yeah. We feel like we're yeah. Daniel's father too. We gotta be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, you know, everybody. It's like all my artists. I'm, I'm, some type of that person with them. Mm-hmm. Like tonight, Escape has a concert, mm. and Candy and Tiny have COVID. 
Oh, oh shit. wow. They sold 20,000 tickets. They God didn't tell damn. nobody that they can't make it. Oh, my goodness. Shit. So Tasha and Tamika, the sisters are on my phone like, yo, can you come perform with us? <laughs> we sent Damaris to fill in. She know all the escape I'm records. Like, <laughs> I can't. I, I just was getting over a little sickness. I'm right. trying to, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's my, that's that's my life. Well, life. That is actually an interesting transition to what we were really asking of getting from doing the crisscross thing to now I now I now I know I could be the label owner, not just the producer. And I yeah. really want to sign acts. Like I'm not gonna let T Boz and Left Eye get away anymore. I, I get I see the game. So TLC <laughs> no, 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 no. No, nah, I never cared about it. I mean, you know, I never I never cared. I never cared about no artists that get away from me. Cause I feel like if you were if you wanna be with me, you should want to be with me. If right. you if you cool with being over here and then being over here, then you won't really care about the logo. You mm -hmm. just care about yeah. I said the same thing to my ex. Being somewhere, right? Yeah. 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 But I just thought, you know what I mean? Like I said, I, I, I always had idols. So mm -hmm. I always, you know, Russell Simmons is my idol when it comes to the record company. Mm -hmm. Teddy Riley is my idol when it comes to the music. Mm -hmm. Quincy Jones is my idol when it comes to the music. Barry Gordy. So I always just like take things from each one of these people that I like. Mm -hmm. And I was just trying to do them myself. And like, I'm going to try this and I'm going to do this. Oh, he did this. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, he did this. I'm gonna try the same thing. I'm mm -hmm. in Atlanta. Nobody's doing this. I'm gonna do this. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> all of that stuff, I just was, you know, just like trying to get through it. But I, I, you know, nobody was telling me what to do. I was just was like, just navigating it myself. Like, you know. But I mean, that that goes back to you trying to buy equipment, not knowing how to use it. No one told you how to use it, and you oh, figured yeah. out how to I, use it I, differently. I still it, never it's, wrote, it's, I never read manuals to this day. I, it goes I hate manuals. Drum machine mm. to the label, you did the same blueprint. And that's where I feel like hip-hop is kind of, the beauty of it is the trained musicians know how to use every bit of equipment, know how every publishing shit should go, how every label should go. And hip-hop figured out how it's not supposed to work. They figured out how that drum machine shouldn't work, mm -hmm. how that label shouldn't work. Mm -hmm. and. I, that whole blueprint, I feel like, has been from you saving up for a drum machine all the way to buying an office because you think you need an office. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and you know, and then, like I said, once again, when you play with equipment and you don't read the manual, you make a lot of mistakes, right? You fuck up a lot of things. But when you're in that state, you don't care if you mess up. You don't care if you... That's why I said like not writing a hit didn't matter because yeah, it, it I didn't know what it mean to have a bunch of hits. So mm -hmm. like, if Escape didn't work, I wouldn't have been like crying. It would have right. been like, oh well, okay, try something else. I gotta try to do it. You know yeah. what I mean? Because I had been doing it anyway. I did Crisscross, then I went to TLC. I didn't know what was gonna happen with that song. They got signed. You know what I mean? That's been yeah, my yeah. whole thing. So I never really got caught up in the fact that like, okay, well if this record works, I mean jump obviously was like a monster record to the point where I'm like, but even then I never thought about jump and saying like, man, I wonder if I could do this again. Oh, I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to do it again. I never even thought about doing it again, period. Mm -hmm. Right? Until I met Babyface. And I met Babyface, he told me, you know, he's like, oh, what's up, man? You that little guy with the little song. And I'm the like- The little guy with the little song. Yeah. Little song. Right. <laughs> so three million in one day, yeah, sir. Like I know you baby face, but I'm, yeah, I'm, what? I'm I'm hip hop, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck who baby face yeah, 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 yeah. is. <laughs> at that, that me, yeah, at that yeah, point, yeah. I'm, oh, your little R and B records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even you know what I mean. Like your name is baby face. Like right. that's right. how I'm like. That's how you know that. yeah. Don't do me. Don't. I know yeah. you're not talking to me like that. Yeah. But he, you know. I respected him, and I, I you know, I, that's how I felt on the inside. I, I listened to what he was saying. He was just like, you know, you do what you did with that group. If you can do that more than one time, then it means something. But if you can't, it ain't gonna mean nothing. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I froze again. Like the whole world just stopped. And I was just like, oh. And I think I stopped listening to Crisscross at that point, and everything else was like how to get to escape mm -hmm. how do i make escape how do i make escape what am i gonna do how am i gonna do this what's going on like my whole focus just was like sh shifted mm -hmm. yeah and um and then like how 
you know, how 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 do I make an R&B record? What do I have to do to make an R&B record? How am I going to make an R&B record? I didn't even have B. Cox or Emmanuel Seal at this time. Mm -hmm. um, I just was still me doing what I'm doing. And um, I told Escape, what's crazy is I told Escape when I get my label, and I didn't have a label when I told them this. I said, yo, when I get my label, I'm going to sign y'all. Y'all going to be the first group to my label. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, bet. Mind you, I had no label. And I didn't know that Columbia was going to give me a label deal when I told them this. But mm -hmm. I was just thinking this, like, I'm going to do it. And uh, so I got my label. I went back. And then I went in. The same guy that brought left out of my house brought escaped to my house. And I hit in. I'm like, yo, I want to sign these girls. I brought Escape to my house, and um, they were singing a cappella. So they was they was like an a cappella group, like yeah. Boys the Men. Mm -hmm. And at that time, what like I said once again, all I knew was the hip hop way. So they start singing "Is My Living in Van" a cappella, and I was like, "Keep singing, keep singing." And they were singing, and I went to the turntables and I put a break beat on. And it was just them singing over top of the breakbeat. Mm. And I'm like, yes, this is it. This shit gonna come out. It's gonna be crazy. It was mm. super simple, like nothing. Mm -hmm. But mm. this just was what I was thinking about. And then I think, matter of fact, before that, maybe like a week before that, I got a call from this guy that um, didn't even work with me. But I don't even, I, I don't, I literally still don't even know how I got a connection with him. I was just talking about this the other day. Um, but this guy called me and he said, Jermaine, I got this producer that I want you to meet. Mm. And I'm like, okay. He's like, man, he's super talented. He an older guy you ain't got to worry about, but you know, he can, he can really help you. And I'm, I'm, like I said, talking to y'all about, about this now is so crazy to me because I'm, I don't even know why this guy called me. It's not like I was like, hey, I need help. Right. I never put no flag out here saying somebody save me. I need, I'm trying to do art. I never did this. Mm -hmm. But this guy came out of nowhere <coughs> and he said, he's from Chicago. He's going to be in Atlanta this weekend. I need you to meet him. So I went up here to a little hotel by Lenny Square and I met the guy. And his name is Manuel Seal. And Manuel was sitting in the hotel playing the hotel piano when I walked in. And I didn't know who he was. I didn't know who I was looking for or nothing. Mm -hmm. I just walked in and this dude was just playing all this crazy like shit. Like in the lobby piano. or? Huh? Yeah, in the lobby, going crazy. Remember what hotel it was? Huh? Remember what hotel it was? It was a hotel that was across the street from Lenox. I think it's, it's at, well, they changed it. It's like, um, it's on the right-hand side by where Houston's is. I don't know what that is, but. Whatever that was, that's where he was at. Yeah, I'm, I'm just a nerd, so I just be no, like yeah, a certain yeah, yeah. shit. So like, I, nah, so I went in there and, like I said, I don't even know who I'm looking for, cause he didn't say, oh, he's a big guy and whatever. So I walk in and there's a guy playing the piano that's in the lobby of the hotel. And he's going crazy, just uh, people standing around watching. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm, I guess this is the nigga I'm supposed to be. Like, I hope this is the guy. <laughs> is this I'm him? Like, Imagine if it not. Yeah, if it wasn't him. But I'm saying the setting is weird. Like, you playing a piano in a hotel. Like, what's going on? So I walk, I'm walk. i walking over there. He know what I am. So mm -hmm. he's like, yo, hey, I'm, I'm Manuel. And I'm like, oh, shit. What's up? And uh, we talk, we talk, whatever. And then I take Manuel back to my house. And we start working on Escape. We did Escape in a week. The first album. Wow. And like me and him, we, we hit it off as soon as we, you know, as soon as we met because I, he had the chords and the R&B shit that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know you how to get tell it. Him yeah, how to I just say tell it. him and he, yeah. would, and he could play it immediately, mm -hmm. right? And um, once I learned that he could do it like that, then then my, you know, my paintbrush was just all over the place. Yeah. I'm like, I got a motherfucker that can. He just gets he, it. He, he yeah. what's gonna happen. Yeah. So I just start trying shit, and um, that Escape album came out. Fire. That's fucking crazy. That's fire. So from Escape, because at this point, you've only signed one group technically. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. So once you finish the Escape album, is it 
Because when he was with Criss Cross, it was like, all right, I got all these people around me, but let me focus on what's popping right now. Obviously, Escape popped right away. Yeah. Did you stay on the wave of let's do Escape or let me get away from this and sign the next act now that I actually have an imprint? Well, yeah, no. So every every at that point, I mean, once I signed Escape, everything was so so deaf. It was. Label. Mm -hmm. It was every. every but I'm saying I, your, your focus now that you find the manual, you find Escape. People can kind of live on their own a little bit. Can you now just go break out and try to find other talent, or are you still trying to micromanage the way you did with Chris? Yeah, Carl? I'm still doing it the same way. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. all the same way. Yeah. It's all the same. I, it's, I don't know no other way. It's all mm. the same way. So, it's it's not to cut you off, JD. I heard that you was originally supposed to sign Mace. That was. But Puff got involved somehow, and then it happened with Bad Boy. Yeah. Like, what's the story behind that? Isn't that how Ye got on Harlem World? Huh? Isn't that how Ye got on Harlem World, too? So. Well, I mean, yeah, I give it to you. So, so I, um, well, I don't know that I was supposed to, I didn't know that I was supposed to sign Mace, right? So I had parties. I always had parties here in Atlanta for my birthday and this, that, and the third. And it was like the biggest parties that Atlanta had ever seen. Mm. So people was coming from out of town. Puff and everybody used to come out here. And Mace and them came to Atlanta to meet me and to get signed. Mm. But he came at my party. You can't. I'm not. I'm all over the place. Yeah. I'm not focused on music at that point. Yeah. So we ain't have a meeting. But he came to Atlanta to meet me for the for the for the party. I mean, to, to at the party. And you know, he didn't know that Puff was gonna be at my party. Mm. And it just like across. You know, they did some some other kind of way. I guess Kuda. You mm -hmm. know, we from New York, so it's just like a New York thing, mm -hmm. whatever. But, um, and I mean, you know, uh, he may stay, he stayed with that. That's why I signed Harlem World. Mm -hmm. um, so Harlem World was on So So Dead. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that's the reason, because he wanted to, you know, he wanted to be on So So Dead before. Mm -hmm. So That's fine. <clears throat> but yeah, so, so after Escape, um, I knew people was looking at me like, yo, you don't make R&B music. And they thought Escape was like a fluke just because of the success of Criss Cross. And I'm like, I don't know how you can think that that's, that's like their fumes. They're not, right. they're not comparable yeah. These at all. girls work, but yeah. if that's what you want to say, then cool, go ahead. I mean, if, any, if anything, Michael Jackson, maybe. Right, right. <laughs> right. So, so I'm like, all right, well, um, I'm gonna do another rap record. I don't know what rap record I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do another rap record. Chris and Chris is on tour. Um, I'm in the studio trying to make beats and whatever, whatever. And Chris and Chris called me and they like, yo, we found this female. She rap in Chicago. She hard. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't like girl rappers. Mm -hmm. And female rappers don't sell records. Mm -hmm. So. I'm cool. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, that's how you started. They called me back. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, I'm trying to tell you, she hard. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, whatever. All right. I'm like, okay, listen, I'm gonna listen to it just for y'all, but I don't really fuck with female rappers. Mm -hmm. And they like, all right, well, you know. And by the way, they still 13, 14 years old. They right. telling me to listen to somebody, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, oh. I'm definitely not listening to them because I'm like, you guys don't know, y'all don't know what y'all, why would y'all like a female rapper? Mm -hmm. I'm still like hard as hardcore. Yeah, yeah. I don't, female rap ain't no way in my mind, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I do my little dance and for some reason I don't give Brat the energy that she wanted. Mm -hmm. She figured out how to come to Atlanta. So she came to Atlanta and she was like, I'm coming to Atlanta and I need you to pick me up. Mm -hmm. You gonna meet with me? And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna meet with you. I I I I accept that I've been, you know, doing the dance. I ain't mm -hmm. gave you whatever. So, um, I go to the hotel. I pick her up, and I get out to get gas at a gas station. Once I pick up, going to my mother's house, and she put the CD in the in the player while I was in the thing paying for the gas, and I came back. So as soon as I jumped in the car, I turned my music on, and it was her rapping. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? She looking like, yeah, nigga. And I'm like. <laughs> and how many years outside of Latifah and MC Light are we at this point? A lot when, of years. Like, Brett came. I'm saying when, when y'all found her, not when she actually came out. Oh, um, yeah, a lot of years still, like, 
MC Light was like Jack the Rapper days. Yeah, like, 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like 80s. Yeah, nah, it's rap, this is 94. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, 94, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this is 94. Brat, yeah, at least 10 years. I mean, Brat knows who they are. Um, we done went through the boss. We done went through, you know, um, all of the female rappers, you know, I mean, Anquanette. I, I mean, I liked all of these girls, mm -hmm. actually. Um, but I just, they never really sold no records, right? They just felt like, I felt, it felt like to me, guys didn't like female rappers. Mm -hmm. um, and so she rapping and I'm like, oh, okay, this how you rap. And it was super aggressive, like super hardcore, just mm -hmm. in your face, rough raps. And I'm like, oh, okay, you can really rap. And then she's she like, yeah. And some of her demo just made me be like, man, okay. I can do something with this. I don't, no, I can't do nothing with this. <laughs> <laughs> but you can really rap. Yeah. I was actually thinking like a record company at that point, like maybe I shouldn't produce this, but I should sign her. Mm -hmm. And to this day, Brat's first album, I feel is the toughest album I ever made. Okay, really? Because it was like, it was hard because I couldn't, I couldn't find it for nothing in the world. Um, it wasn't really a blueprint before that album for that specific sound with a, yeah, a female I mean, rapper at all. It, it was from scratch, I mean, it period. Wasn't nothing. It was just like, you know, I would have, I would make a record and then I'd play it for people that was in the room and people would do me like he's doing right now. Like, it wouldn't even be like. Pain on mine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, that ain't it. Mm -hmm. I scrap the song. I write another song. So then I start thinking, maybe it's me. I, maybe I can't write for her. Mm -hmm. So now she'll write, do her writing. And I think, okay, we got it. And I play it. Two, three people like it. Ten people don't make no kind of movements. I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, like, maybe I ain't got it. Maybe I shit. Maybe this is just crisscross, escape, run. And that's it. I can't figure this out. Like, mm -hmm. maybe I didn't hit the end of my road. Mm -hmm. um, it took me two years to get the Functified. Mm. Okay. Two years. I had Brett sign living at my house, trying to make records every day. Every day. Every day, every night, every day, every night, trying to figure it out. And what I think, what what took so long was that I, I never saw an identity from her. Mm. I never, I saw her. She was obsessed with crisscross, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so she was looking like a female version of us. Mm -hmm. Cause I had braids, they had braids. She came looking just like we look, mm -hmm. right? So it was like. I really didn't have nothing to write about. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know what to write about with her. And then, um, we let the water out of my pool in the house, and the, some they was doing some. I think I was getting the pool painted. Um, and my mother wouldn't allow people to smoke weed. Oh, everybody that was around me. They was trying to be respected mm -hmm. of my mother. Cause it was my studio's in my mother's house, um, so Brett used the bottom of the swimming pool as her smoke spot. Right, mm -hmm. so I used to like try to go find Brett, and I'm like, where the fuck is she at? <laughs> and and one night I went back to the pool, and she was in the deep end of the pool, smoking. Mm -hmm. And this was my first time really like seeing Brett smoke weed, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh. I ain't never seen no female rappers do that. Mm -hmm. Latifah them ain't smoking no weed. Right. MC Light wasn't smoking no weed. Mm -hmm. The boss wasn't even smoking no weed. So I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Mind you, Snoop is smoking yeah. everywhere. Yeah. It's starting to mm -hmm. look like a thing. Like mm -hmm. I think smoking Roxanne weed and rap weed. becomes yeah. a... <laughs> yeah. What did you say? I said Roxanne probably smoked some weed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. You know. <laughs> um, Queens British. But it was like it's. I, I'm looking at this. I'm like, okay, this that's this gonna be your thing. You you gonna be like a female version of Snoop. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You can smoke, you smoke weed, you rap. Mm-hmm. You rap hardcore shit, but you smoke weed and you... Because cause I kept trying to figure out what was going to make guys like you. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. That was the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it, was a, it was a male genre. That was the listeners. Yeah, so yeah you, got, I mean, you have to you know, make... I mean, I didn't care much about... I mean, I wasn't, you know... It went, she could really, really rap, so it wasn't even about, you know, sexuality or none of that. It was like she wanted to be considered one of the best female rappers out. So she was really trying to rap, like getting ciphers and freestyle and all this other shit. So it was like, how do I get these guys to like you? So, I'm start, and so then I start seeing... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Listen, man. Nah, that ain't him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it is. Wait a minute. Oh, God. Is FaceTime to me? <laughs> All right, man. Hold on, man. <laughs> oh, my God. They call from a different number. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to break the internet with this one. I'm ready. I don't want to be sent out. If they come me right now. Yeah. Yeah, we rolling. Hey, look, we ain't stop rolling. Right? We have not stopped rolling. Don't censor shit. Don't stop rolling. Now the interview started. Now that I'm here, <laughs> nigga, niggas know what time it is. I'm gonna take it's my me. shoes off. When I'm here. Yeah, me too. I got no nah, shoes off. Nah, I'm gonna keep the Dior's on though. I'm gonna keep it real. What the Adidas like. socks? But listen, it's gonna be number a bunch of laughing emojis, a bunch of real shit, a bunch of real talk, <laughs> yeah. all that. That's now the interview started. All that shit, that corporate shit, Jetty been kicking all that. We ain't on that type of time. <laughs> I'm fresh off tour. The only nigga who you know, check the facts, who ain't gotta drop no fucking single to put 20,000 asses in no seats, nigga, mm. me. Talk that talk. Ain't nobody do that. I like nobody. that type of talk. Me, Kiss, the Red Hot Chili Pepper, who else? Who else? Me, rock groups, nigga, and I don't do rock music, nigga, know that? Mm. Mm. Oh, you meant Kiss, the, I was thinking Jada. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's the big homie, I just bought the Kiss Kiss, you know I love you. I oh, just yeah, bought nah, you about, we yeah, were talking nah. Rolex talk, all that shit. Yeah, nah, that's you the homie. That's family. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying? That's the homie. Yeah, no, that's no, family. Sure. I'm talking about kissing niggas that paint their oh, yeah. face. Yeah, no, yeah, I know yeah. blow up shit. Very aware. You know what I mean? Very aware. Yeah. And we gonna ask Eddie why, he know who I wanna work with too, and he, he's scared to do it. He might not be legendary enough to pull it off. <laughs> JD might not be legendary no. enough? Yeah. He need, need a bigger icon? Am I bigger than Jermaine? You? Absolutely I am. Are you bigger than Jermaine? What? Absolutely. In what capacity? All capacity. As an artist? Tell Jermaine to walk in the mall with me together. Oh, no, oh, no. Okay. Popularity. Right. Popularity. Okay. Sure. Oh, yeah. Popularity, for sure. But music, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I I want to see, like, like, wait, what? I ain't going to test that. No, no, no. I ain't going to test that on the music tip. But, you know, Snoop found me, though. You know what I mean? I was ready already. You know what I mean? Like, Jady kind of got it easy. You got it easy? After Absolutely. That's like a nigga bringing me a casserole and it's made already. And I said, here you go, eat. <laughs> like, right. I came to him already. He'll tell you, I came ready. No, like, this wasn't no. This is the perfect time because we was just getting into. And we haven't met. Have we met before? I met I you a, a bunch of times. In but passing, it, it, wasn't, sure. it wasn't the type of environment. How we, we, no, yeah. Get your ass in here. Kick it. Yeah. Sit down. Yeah. Don't be scared to sit next to your son, nigga. It's okay. We about to. This is going to be the most. This is going to be the biggest interview you've done in the past two years. He, he said, uh, okay, he's a bigger Khaled. icon than you. Huh? He said he a bigger icon than you. He is. He's a star. Yeah, for sure. Popularity, for sure. But huh? he, he said he said music, no. Huh? He just gave you. He gave you a. We had to make Musically, sure he was because he was I saying. can't do what he can do. Yeah. No one. If can. I can make beats, but that's the genius in it. You can do things it he can. He can do things that you can. It works, right? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, all that. Yeah. He has a Thrasher jersey on. That's incredible. I haven't seen that since Jermaine had a suite at Phillips at State Farm. Now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you from Atlanta? Yeah. What part? I'm from. My nigga. You from Gwinnett? Yeah. <laughs> you see his face? JD, this is going, this is going everywhere. I'm telling you, these clips are going to be crazy. Listen, no. I'm chilling. I'm just here to I'm chilling it, too. I, I want you to get your shit off. Yeah. Let's and do it. So JD is perfect because we was kind of sort of getting into the Bow Wow. And he said he said he had Beware the Dog as a demo ready handed it to you. Yeah. You ain't no, 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 nothing. No, 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 I was going to wear some jewelry, but I know you had lights. I didn't want to like fuck up the lenses with the nah, flare. Yeah, yeah. Thank everybody's everybody's eyes that, and shit. Man. I get it. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> All right. 
This is great. Audemars? Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's cute. What are you doing? Like, Because they say you always supposed to, like, when you talk to people, you you know, like, you know you talking to by the shoes that a man wears and by the, the watch he wears. Oh, yeah? So I peep game. You taught me well. You want to hit this? I don't think I taught you that. <laughs> 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 that wasn't part of your lesson. Can, can, can I get the, can I get the recollection of both y'all the first day y'all met? Cognac? Your recollection of it and his recollection of it. Oh, she's trying to kill me. She's, I bet you want this. Uh, she's having a brown. All right, just what you want. Right. She wants me to like say right, some so, crazy shit. I might. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so, so I'm I'm. Bow Wow comes to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. We'll call you back. I'm in the interview with Jermaine. We're not coming to Magic. We're going somewhere else tonight. I just asked you what was wrong with you. Nothing. I'm okay now. I'm, I mean, I'm feeling myself. Call you back, Bala. We love you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Okay. When this nigga comes over here, my phone start going. Okay, I'm going to turn my shit off. It's going to be the best interview of all 2020. No, listen. All right, listen. Listen. No, 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 listen. I got this, you. I if got this doesn't premiere first. All right, listen. So, Bawa comes. First, Bawa's from Ohio. Movie? Relax, relax, relax. Okay, relax. Bow Wow's from Ohio, right? Right. So Bow Wow comes to Atlanta. I'm not really sure Bow Wow cares who I am when he comes to Atlanta um, because he was signed to Death Row. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, everything outside of Death Row was soft as, you know, mm -hmm. cotton, basically. Yeah. Um... um but you know he comes he comes on a night when it probably couldn't have been a better night for him to come to Atlanta, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I pick him up in my um, continental, continental tea, and I take him to this club. Now he's what eleven years old. He can't. He ain't supposed to be in the club. I take him to the club because that same night me and Jay Z is performing mm -hmm. and we doing V Jam. Not to cut you off, but this is the part we have to make sure we insert that footage. Yeah, we'll do that. Which, yeah, we gotta insert the footage. What? I'm thinking like direct talk, like shit. You yeah. can't the this stay show. What the fuck wrong? No, we I know, but I know how cameras <laughs> we work. We gotta that. insert that because yeah. people might not believe it. They think it's a bow wow challenge every time we talk some. Yeah. Some Yo, crazy man, shit. what's wrong with this nigga, man? Let's have this dude do that on the show. I know, I'm man. just saying we should insert the footage. No, I love. Listen, no, it'll be I right love, in the corner. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna edit me saying that. Yeah. We know when to insert that. Your VO is gonna be over the footage of me performing. Hope had on the Yankee. You wanna sit where she is and just let me do the interview? I'm smoking until you're done. Tap me when you're done. Yeah. All right, so listen. So no, I want your eleven-year-old recollection. Yeah, yeah. So me and Jay Z is performing. Uh, we do money anything. Hove do two, three songs, but before that, I introduce Hove to Bow, and Hove like this little guy. You know, he he looking at him like, what do he do? Mm. And I'm like, he rap. And and um, by the way, I never I seen Bow Wow on Arsenio just like y'all seen him. Mm -hmm. I did not see Bow Wow on Arsenio. You mm. didn't see him? He was too young. I was producer credit. We're gonna run ten. some footage over that part. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, come on, man, come on. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was, that was eight. Yeah. How old was you? I was born in ninety. So what, what year was that? Oh man, he doesn't remember this. He yeah, I remember it. that. You saw? Him, I right? remember that. Yeah. When was this? Well, yeah. Ninety three. You yeah. were three years old. I don't remember Arsenio when I was three, like that. Like, oh, okay. I, I watch reruns, but. Oh, okay. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember that. So, Bow Wow's on Arsenio before I, you know, before we actually hooked up. And I, you know, they was telling me about him, they signed him, blah, blah, blah. So, I was like, yo, send him to Atlanta, let's kick it. He came to Atlanta that night. Me and Jay, like I said, was performing. We start performing, and then Jay was like, JD, no, by the way, I think Ho start performing mm -hmm. and Bow Wow sitting on the stage like mm -hmm. this. Let me perform. Mm -hmm. Let me perform. This is telling me mm -hmm. he's 11 years old. I respect mm -hmm. that. Let me perform. That's fine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, let you perform. I know. You see my crowd? I got a whole, this shit is packed. Right. And he like, let me perform. I'm like, I never even seen this guy perform. So I'm like, you don't even know what I don't know happen. what's going to fucking happen. Yeah. I'm like, nah, let me perform. Let me perform. So then... So then, whole finish, and then I go back and I start talking to the crowd, and then some kind of way, I don't know what made me say it. I'm like, yo, 
And this little kid on the stage with me right now, he want to rap. Mm-hmm. And the crowd's like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm nervous as a motherfucker. I'm scared as hell. Like, what's what's going to happen? Yeah. So then I gave him the microphone, and he told the dude, he said, put the beat on. He told the DJ to put the beat on. Facts. I'm like, oh, wait. He told the DJ what to do. Mm-hmm. What's going on? He yeah, emceeing that. So he, he's like really doing yeah. it. So he t- the DJ put the beat on. He started freestyling, the crowd going crazy. I don't know what he was saying. You remember the rap? No. I don't. He probably wasn't saying nothing, but he was just... Like, <laughs> I'm going to let you keep going. What? I'm going to let you keep No, you, you were saying something? No, nah, I remember it like... You just said you don't <clears throat> remember the rap. No, nah, I don't. But I remember that day, like it was yesterday. I remember being at the Hyde in Buckhead, which is, is still there. When I was checking in the hotel, Hove was checking in too. I never told this story to nobody. Mm-hmm. Hove was checking in too. And what's crazy is how I knew it was Jay-Z. I knew y'all had the record together. But the only memory I had of Jay-Z at that time, because being on Death Row, I'm I'm West Coast out. But mm-hmm. I was always like a hip-hop baby. Mm-hmm. So I knew what the fuck was going on. Mm-hmm. But when I saw Hove was checking in himself. Mm. This is when the touch me, then sunshine, baby. Okay, face, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. right. <clears throat> Volume one. That's how I knew. I'm like, yo, this guy looks familiar. I'm like, oh, I'm, okay, I know that song. Mm-hmm. Jermaine kept me in the hotel the whole day. Mm-hmm. I was in the hotel with my mom. I'm like, yo, where is he? at? he playing? I don't know. He pulls up in the black Bentley, and um, <clears throat> I come downstairs. I remember asking the first question I ever asked JD. I'll never forget this. I said, um, what kind of car is this? She had like thick rabbit fur in the front. Never seen a car with just a B on it. So I'm mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? I'm like, mm-hmm. this shit is crazy. When I went yeah. to his crib, I'm like, oh shit. This guy's fucking rich. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, he got every car in the back. <laughs> got fucking dogs, pool, game room. Like, this yeah. shit is crazy. Yeah. And then um, that night, was it Atrium? What? What's the name of the, the club? Atrium. Atrium, right? And uh, everything you're saying is fact. Like, I, I wanted to go. I wanted to perform. I wanted to rap. I wanted to do my shit. It was me, you, Jay-Z, and Brat. If I'm not mistaken, Brat was on the stage with us that night. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, yo, I want to rap. I want to rap. Fuck that. Mm-hmm. I want to rap. Mm-hmm. And, you know. I mean, we was joking around, but to have that confidence, where did that come from at 11? Because you got people now that's 30 it. that wouldn't have that type of confidence. Because I've been doing it. That, that was the whole thing. We get a cup. I can't ask on J.D. Uh, carpet. And it's the Virgil. Uh, Virgil, rest in peace, rug. Absolutely. Like, so for me, it was like... <laughs> yeah, man, what the fuck you doing? I mean, I'm sorry, Virgil, rest in peace. I'm sorry. <laughs> Virgil, this me. <laughs> yeah, but Virgil made it. You can't take credit for somebody who did the carpet. I mean, but... You bought the carpet. Or he, no matter of fact, he sent you the carpet. <laughs> no, you talking well, about... It's not even carpet. It's a rug. What, it's not even what? a carpet. It's then a rug. Virgil, I'm sorry. When you're, when, you, when you're like a, a, a weed smoker, we ash anywhere. Oh. Oh, right. hell no. Nah. Hold yeah, let's on, get, Let's get him a cup of something. All right, well, talk to me while yeah, he walks yeah, yeah. up. Okay. Let's, let's keep it raw. So you this shit is going to be the best shit ever. Oh, no, I want to keep this entire thing the way it is. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah we're not adding no. nothing. This is beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm yeah, not even going to get into trouble. This, this is beautiful. Me. I'm good. This is beautiful. Oh, no, if you feel like getting in trouble, it's cool. We don't mind our business. It's good. No, we're not those type of dudes. All right, so yeah, you perform at 11. Right. Did you have Ross in your by the way, which is a legendary. No, that was at. He was. Well, that happened. That wasn't supposed to happen. Okay. Thanks, Pop. That wasn't supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember Shug like, no. Like, to Arsenio. No. Like, he can't go out there. You know what I'm saying? And then um, my mom at the time was like, this is this is it. Yeah. If it ain't going to happen. And that's why I always tell people, like, if you feel it, if you love this hip-hop shit, if you really want to do it, you got to go for it. I don't give a fuck what type of time you on. Yeah. What, what time it is. You got to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that mm-hmm. was my moment to go. Mm-hmm. And... You know, I look back at that like, damn, like, is, there's nobody from my from my age bracket from the time I came into the game, no Ja Rule, no Nelly. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody who came out, like, in the 2000s, the mid-2000s, they never did Arsenio. Never. No. No, there's a very never. few artists that are still active. I'm talking today. 93. Yeah. None of them niggas they was rapping. They that they still did Arsenio. Them niggas wasn't rapping. Yeah. There's people that came out in 93 that didn't do, do yeah. Arsenio. Wasn't rapping. <laughs> yeah. That's and fact. if they was out, tell them. Y'all niggas weren't rapping when I was rapping? Mm-hmm. Or maybe y'all was, but... Not where I was, like, that was the perfect time for me to go ahead and do my shit, and I'm glad that my mom pushed me to do that. That was not, nice. as you can see, if you wrote a, if you wrote the footage back, it happened at the end of the show, mm-hmm. when the credits was rolling. Mm-hmm. I'm cursing, saying mm-hmm. all type of shit that a six-year-old shouldn't be saying. Mm-hmm. But where, where does your, you connect with Death Row in 93 even connect? It, it happened in my hometown, Columbus, Ohio. So what happened was the Chronic Tour came, 
And um, God rest his, you know, RIP to AJ Johnson. Mm -hmm. Of course, I know him as, you know, yeah. my nigga Friday, yeah. you know what I'm saying, did his thing or whatever, but he's ill. But yeah. he was actually the MC of the whole entire Chronic Tour. So when he got on stage, he was like, yo, anybody want to come on stage? And so my mom, psh, of course, you know, the kids, yeah, yeah. you go to a concert, the kids are always going to get yeah. selected. The yeah. kids, they cute, whatever. Mm -hmm. Pick me, I go on there, I start rapping, they throwing money on the stage. Daz comes, grabs me, bring me backstage. And that's how the, the famous picture of me, Snoop, at mm -hmm. like 19, Dre yeah. at like 21. Mm -hmm. Me at put, like. Put that right down here. Absolutely. You think what I'm saying, right? <laughs> so that happens. It's in my, feet in it's not a yeah. no, come These, on, these are facts. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, so, you, know, so. you know, we've given Bow his flowers like facts. before he pulled up just no, now. For a long flowers, time, man. we've given him his flowers for a long time. He said thanks. So. That's how the legendary picture popped off. Yeah. Me, Snoop, and Dre. Mm -hmm. Crazy. I would say like top, not top five, not top ten, but like definitely top 20 pictures of hip hop history. That's how I feel. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, don't know, don't know, don't know nigga shit. currently rapping right now, making noise, making no type of money right now. I got a picture with Snoop at 19 or 18, Dre at 21. Mm -hmm. Me, it's us three. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. And from there on, it was, okay, we're going to put him in the audience. We're gonna take him on tour. Every city we go to, we're gonna put him, we're gonna pick him. Well, ga Game so photoshopped like himself with Tupac. What? Game photoshopped himself with Tupac on okay. Instagram when they was kids. <laughs> what? Never mind. I didn't know. <laughs> I keep telling you, Game. It's the, it's the corporate shit. It's the white boy <laughs> shit. Just act like you don't hear it. Tonight. Listen, I, I, I fuck with Game. Yeah, he was with Pac like when they was kids. Hear. I was like, how did this happen? Uh, yeah. Okay. It was Photoshop. So back to, uh, <laughs> back to uh, the J show yeah. when you performed. Right. W were you signed? To, no, at that point you still weren't signed. No, but I knew it was it was official because when I got the call, JD, I don't even know if you know this, but I was actually on the football field and my mom when I was when I was on the sidelines, my mom like ran down to the fence and said, "Come on, we going to Atlanta in like two days." I'm like, "For what?" Mm -hmm. Me with Jermaine Dupree. I'm like, who was that? That's why Jermaine was like, "I don't even think he know who I was." I'm mm -hmm. like, "What?" Chris crossed it up, but as I was growing up. You know, I, re I really wasn't a big Criss Cross fan growing up because I always was like, man, I'm supposed to be where them niggas is at. Fuck mm -hmm. that. Like, I'm on the biggest label. I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. But I was a kid then. But that's how I was thinking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I looked at everybody so he back then. You wanted to diss Criss Cross. Yeah, bad. See, look. Really? That's the thing. Like, the dissing. That, that's I'm with Snoop, Death Row. Like, we the hottest. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. and, I'm record, and, I'm, and I'm making music. Like, at the time, Corrupt was writing my shit. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm only like seven years Shout old. So yeah. eight years old. You know what I mean? So, um, in my mind, I'm like, I'm supposed to be where they at. Like, mm -hmm. why, am, why am I just, I don't get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it, everything fell in line once, you know, the Snoop and the Death Row thing kind of fell apart. I went back home, and then I got the call from Steve Perdome. I'm like, yo, we got a situation. We should put him with Jermaine Dupree. And mm -hmm. then once I, you know, did my homework, I'm like, damn. All right. Then once he picked me up with a Bentley, okay, showing me some new shit as a big homie supposed to do. Right. Yeah. Took me to the crib, first big house I ever saw. I'm like, fuck. Mm -hmm. JD had eleven cars. I'm like, the fuck. Mm -hmm. Like dogs, cars, the mansion, the the girls. I'm seeing them go in and out. I'm sorry. But we, we talk allegedly, it's all allegedly. It work. No, no, this it's is fact. Fuck allegedly. I hate that word. <laughs> this is facts. Yeah. JD is cool. Yeah. I'm like, yo. <laughs> he ain't said like, it was cool. I'm like, yo. This is like the first like dude who I seen in my life that it's really cool. Like, my mm -hmm. pops wasn't around like that. So mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, damn, this nigga's like, he lit. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. fun and he young, like, and he be doing shit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? The first time I ever been on a yacht, JD took me. First Super Bowl I ever been to, JD took me. First piece of jewelry I ever rocked that was real, JD gave it to me. So it was like, that's mm -hmm. what a, as a little homie, that's what you want your big homie to do. Right, absolutely. And it was, it was, it was on after that. So even though it wasn't no, no ink sign, I knew where I wanted to be. He knew where I was going. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, it was nothing to think about. How, how we get from the Jay-Z stage to Beware of the Dog? Where does that transition happen? Oh, it, took, it took a you while. Know. It did. I'm about to say, I sat still. Shit. It, it, took, a, it took a while. <laughs> I still sat. It took a long time. It was, yeah. a, it was, a, it was still a process with, with him too, because like, um, when I got Bow Wow, I, it was 10 years after Criss Cross. 100%, I mean, you know, totally... 10 years, um, a real 10 year stretch. And mm -hmm. I was just looking at it like, okay, well, it's been 10 years, so I, it's, I could do this again now. It's been long enough where people won't, it won't look like that's my thing. Mm -hmm. um, cause I, was, I, I kept fighting being the guy who knows how to put out young artists. 
I don't know why, but you know, I get it. I was fighting it, right? Yeah. Um, and so I gave myself this stretch to be like, okay, shit, I ain't did, I ain't did nobody young in ten years. So can't nobody say you've been. That's all you do, right? Mm. So then I, when I got the Bow Wow, but Bow Wow was different than Criss Cross because Criss Cross weren't artists. He was already, like he said, he was rapping before he even came to me. He he thought his name was Kid Gangsta. Mm -hmm. Like that was his rap name on Death Row. So he was already rapping. He was already like around weed smoke, you know, Death Row. At at the time when he was there, mm -hmm. it was no, it was Death Row. It was Death Row. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It was like the craziest probably company and shit around that he could be around as a kid. Mm -hmm. um, crazy for an adult. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was, yeah, it was crazy for adults. Yeah. But but so so I had to figure out how to get to a place that he like because he already was an artist. Mm -hmm. and Chris and Chris I made into artists. Right. But he was already an artist, so I had to like Break him out him. Of some ways. I had to figure out him, yeah. see what he was doing, da da da. So he had to stay. He stayed here um, in Atlanta in my house and was just like around and around and around. And we put out, we put out one song. Wild Wild West. Huh? On the Wild Wild West soundtrack with with uh, Will Smith. Mm -hmm. And um, that won it, right? It, that won the song. It won it, but but it was just a test to see. And I was just trying to like hurry up and get him out. And then it was like, I'm like, nah, that ain't it. He not, he not, he not cool enough. Like he just seemed like a little rapper. They regret that now. I'm like, he can't be like, he can't be just like a little rapper. He gotta be, he gotta be, he gotta be like double fly as Chris was to everybody. Like when you said you was wearing your pants backwards, mm -hmm. like I was trying to figure out what. Was Bow Wow gonna be able? How was I gonna get Bow Wow to have that same effect on young kids and young boys and whatever young girls and all of that? So mm -hmm. it was like, um, I just kept trying to think of like the coolest shit, the coolest shit that he could possibly do. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then um, I got the soundtrack for Big Mama's House, and. I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out with this. I'm gonna figure out a song for Bow Wow on the soundtrack, and we're gonna get this going. That so, used to be a real thing, breaking artists on soundtracks. Yeah. That used to be a real thing. Oh, yeah, because it was a broke It was a cheat. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. a cheat. Oh, a movie. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you had a big movie like Martin Lawrence, it was big like yeah. Big Mama's House. The budget was bigger than what you could get on the mm -hmm. album budget yeah, for a new for sure. artist, right? So you could get a big video. His first video, Dave Myers did his first video. Mm -hmm. You don't know no new artists who get Dave Myers. Yeah, that's crazy. He's thirteen. He's that's twelve wild. years old. He got Dave Myers as his first his first video, mm -hmm. right? So, um, um, so I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, I'm so the first time about when we did the first record, I wasn't thinking about the the collaboration between him and Snoop. Mm -hmm. I wasn't I wasn't really like married to how important that was, mm -hmm. right? And then it started clicking to me, like, you know, this guy is mentored by Snoop, produced by me, on my label. Like, you gotta use all of this shit. This mm -hmm. is, this is a, these are superpowers. Yeah. Like, these are not like, this ain't shit that you could just like, oh yeah, Snoop found him, and like mm -hmm. you said, left eyes in the closet like yeah. you can't just like you know what I mean and I was doing that at first I wasn't even like putting that energy into it mm -hmm. and then one one day I thought about it and I was like yo I'm gonna do a video with Bow Wow and I'm gonna have a dog running down the street and he gonna turn into Bow Wow and I mean, I mean Brat was here it was me and Brat was thinking about it and she was like you crazy and I'm like nah that shit gonna be stupid mm -hmm. and I'm like Snoop did it Snoop turned into the thing. And I'm like, we gotta do, we gotta do what Bow he's little Bow Wow. His right. name is Little Bow Wow for it's basically little Snoop. That's yeah, what his yeah. name is. Right. Right? So once I started understanding that that was the okay, we got some meat right here. We gotta we got some meat right here. Mm -hmm. What how I gotta make him sound so that he can live up to that 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 level of you know creativity. Um and then I'm like, 
he always be acting like he can really rap. Right? And Brad like, yeah, that little motherfucker think he shit. Da, 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 da. I'm like, all right, well, Brat, write him a rap. Right? Mm -hmm. At this point, Brat was... Yeah. Man, Chicago, like, do a die shit. I'm like, yeah, West 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 I, can't, I can't even do her raps, right? I'm mm -hmm. like, why? Well, I'm, I'm like, you write a, 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 so I'm write a rap. I write a song. I write Bounce Me first verse. I say, Brat, you write the second verse. I want you to write that shit like you write it. Mm -hmm. And write it crazy with the cadence and all of this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So Brat did a verse. Now I'm thinking it's too hard for him. Yeah. I'm thinking like we don't went too far because he ain't going to be able to do it because this ain't how he rap, right? Yeah. So then um, we doing it in here, actually, in this room right here. Uh -huh. Bow Wow come in this room and he didn't want, he never wanted me to be in the studio when he write his, when he do his verses. So I left the room. I don't know, I think I went to the strip club or something. I came back and he had did, I heard Brat verse. I ain't hear my verse. I heard the verse that, that Brat did when I came back. Mm. And I was like. Mm. You still have that? The reference? I mean, not the reference is him. Oh, you talking about the Brat reference? The reference. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably That'd be funny. Right but when I came in, I was like. How y'all. Get him to do that, and mm -hmm. it, by the way, I'm, it wasn't just it was just you it was and light, though. it was just you and Brian <laughs> right. here. Yeah, it was just him and Brian. Now, like he's saying, it's light, but he wasn't rapping like that. Yeah, you know so I that. I didn't think I thought it was like yeah this was gonna be difficult for him, mm -hmm. and it wasn't. It was like super easy for him, mm -hmm. and I'm like, wait wait a minute, oh. Oh, he could really rap like, mm -hmm. like, like he could really rap like this ain't like some shit like, and I wasn't here when he did it, so I don't even know how the fuck he came out, right? Mm -hmm. So all I know is I heard the song and I'm like, okay, boom. I need to get somebody on the song. I gotta get like, cause I caught Tasha from Escape over here to sing the hook, and we start finishing the bounce of me record, and. At that point, all I all I could start thinking about was the video. I'm thinking about like, yo, when these people see this little dude rapping like this, and he turned into a dog, and we got a little singing hook on here, we should be good, mm -hmm. right? I'm just trying to, yeah, you, you know what I mean? It. I'm trying to do what I do. Yeah, you know, I started paying attention to that. I started yeah. paying attention to how much so so death meant to kids, cause of bow wow. I start seeing other young artists want to rap because of Bow Wow. And I start saying, oh, okay, he's creating this a thing. Mm -hmm. And and So So Deaf is the brand behind this thing, right? Mm -hmm. So then that's when I start, stop, um, I started not being scared to like be the guy that break young artists. Yeah. Right. I'm like, okay, at this point, I know how to do this mm -hmm. better than anybody. It's not broke, don't so, I'm going to just figure out how to do it again, mm -hmm. but do it on a different scale, mm -hmm. right? So when the rap game came, that's what that was. The rap game basically did exactly that. Bow Wow, be, Bow wow was 12. Mm -hmm. The rap game took it back down. They was, they was a whole group of you young motherfuckers that in. slew, Absolutely. right? Like now, like Mulatto, younger than Bow Wow. Mm -hmm. J.I.'s younger than Bow Wow. All of these kids, they younger than him. Mm -hmm. So it's like the same thing. It's like you've seen, that's what, that's what, that's what it just started. I saw that and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be my thing. I'm gonna start go one, boom, gonna take it back mm -hmm. and figure out a way to do it again and just keep sending it and selling it into a whole new audience. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Even like the, like this whole Trey Young thing. Like Trey Young is what, 21? Who we'll put you on Trey? Huh? Who we'll put you on Trey? Trey Young's 21? Who we'll put you on Trey now? <laughs> he, he supposed to because you're young, right? Oh, How old is he? Trey like 22. Okay, yeah, it's so it's people that that's that's fucking with Trey Young, buying these sneakers, seeing these hoodie, buying the hoodies and all that. They probably ain't even listen to Jermaine Dupri album, right? Yeah. But now they see this. This is associated with that, and that's 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 giving this whole brand a whole nother that start over thing. And mm -hmm. it's like now, like I said, now that I know that that's what it is, that's what I use. So just to answer your question in a long form. That's what Bow Wow did. He brought, he brought that, that structure to me, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Once I realized what it was, I'm like, okay, I got to use this. Because, yeah, as a star, like he said, if you, as a rapper, to see kids p- fainting and running and chasing him, mm-hmm. you can't duplicate that. Right. Like, that's not some shit you can be like, okay, well, I'm going to go. We're going to go find another one of these. Mm-hmm. Okay. I do kind of want to, <laughs> I kind of want to gas him up a little bit. <laughs> What you what you feel you brought to So So Deaf? The whole why? <laughs> I don't know. I just take a simple like, question. <laughs> you know, I you know, after we got done with the Millennium Tour, I'm like JD, look. You know, the shit I was talking when I came in here, I'm like, look. Here you go, man. <laughs> you know I'm a gas it. I'm supposed to. Man, if, if nobody else gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So I'm like, get your shit off. I'm like JD, look. I said, nigga, I'm like Kiss, Rolling Stones right now. I told you, you know I me, mean? me and Drake, we talk a lot. He like, nigga, listen. I don't know nobody else in the business other than the greats who can go on tour, arenas, and mm-hmm. roll out of bed and go do some shit and do what y'all did. That shit is incredible. So it's like, I tell him all the time, even, even when we in our group chat and we talking shit to each other, I'm like, nigga, you know I'm the biggest artist you ever had. Straight up, up and down. Movies. Mm-hmm. If that fails, hosting. Mm-hmm. The first rapper to host the grant, you know, the rec, mm-hmm. all that. 106. Hosting skills, rapping, acting, all that. I'm the Bo Jackson of rap. Get your shit off. <laughs> Get your shit off. Kanye Con- ain't not the Bo Jackson of rap? I mean, I never really dipped into, like, sneakers and what he accomplished. You know what I'm saying? That's, mm-hmm. that's all him. But mm-hmm. if, as far as, like, what LL laid down, what keep, you know. Hove could be Bo I'm, Jackson of rap. On a business standpoint, from rapping to business. Different things, Absolutely. Yeah. But when we talking about entertainment, mm-hmm. pure entertainment. I don't give a, like, I really feel like I'm that nigga. Like, acting, Will Smith. Do it. hosting something, pay me. Rapping, just prove that for two months straight. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I tell him all the time, no disrespect to nobody who was signed to the label before me, but it's like, you know, it's like the inner snoop in me. When me and Dog talk is, when Dre come around, I'm, mm. when JD around, I, yeah, it's just weird. It's just how it, mm-hmm. it, it just functions that way. But I tell him all the time, and I'm like Snoop would tell Dre, I'm the biggest. Mo- no matter what, mm-hmm. I'm the biggest, and that's just what it is. JD called me when uh, y'all was on tour, and he asked me a question. He said, "Yo, why?" He said, "Bow was selling out all these arenas." And it's crazy. He was like, "But none of these blogs is picking it up. They not talking oh, they about was. it. They not. No, nah, they weren't. Not no, nah, they wasn't at the time. Probably not like how you wanted them to, but." They did for when it mattered. You know what nah, I'm saying? Nah, the, like, the shade room fuck with you. I'm not hey. talking about the shade room. I'm talking about these rap gods. Yeah. We're not talking oh, like about source sh- and yeah. the, the, the blogs. But, the blogs. I mean, I'm talking about blogs the blogs. Matter, like, say yeah. academic, right? Academic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. DJ Academics, I'm talking to you. You oh, hear me he right goes. now. He contacted me. I don't. He I, 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 no, I'm not. I'm dead ass serious. Oh, okay. I'm oh. saying he a young, he's a young guy, right? right. Because this is something that, that's always really really weird to me about so so dead okay because i talk about we, we we've been talking about the youth you see how young i was when i started mm-hmm. you see how young he was everything here has always been young but you barry gordy no but okay but right but i'm saying you got all these you got young bloggers now that claim their uh what is it? Reporting the young artists of the world, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you not report the young guy that got all the young guys into because rap? You mm-hmm. have to look at the name of the tour y'all was doing. That I'm I'm 31 years old. I'm running to that tour. Mm-hmm. That was my whole childhood. Fact. These people is is literally who I grew up on. Like this is when I was trying to get pussy was when they was making I'm music. About to say you know where the so, is gonna be at. So that's where I run to and no matter how old those bloggers, whoever they are, their audience is younger. N- now you're just trying to post some shit where you look old. Nah, and because but, hip hop moves in two years of hip hop is 15 years in any other genre. I would, I, I, listen, I would, I, I, I would agree with that, but that's not the truth, right? You know, Tom Brady win the Super Bowl this year. Mm-hmm. They were going to report that shit. Uh, that's different. No, no, no. ESPN will. ESPN will. But Thank you. People's Magazine no, will go after Giselle and Tom Brady. Oh, that should be a Super Bowl. Couple CNN. But, JD, but do you know why? Because the 
Nah, but, no, no, but, 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 but like he said, listen, like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm trying to all give right. you your flowers. I'm just saying, uh-huh. like, no, I get it, nigga, wait, wait, listen, to, listen, okay. listen. All I'm saying is, I don't understand how you overlook, like you just said, if you want to be Bo Jack, whatever you want to be, I don't understand how you overlook a guy that came out okay. at 12 years old. Okay. So, three million records in 2001. Mm-hmm. And in 2021, okay, it's selling out arenas, mm-hmm. and nobody else that was on 106 and Park when Bow Wow was number one on 106 and Park is doing that. Is even even out? Like, no, that's, I, that's that's facts. But can I, also, can I give Justin Leboy a, a, a quick meme real quick? You asked him for flowers from the wrong soil. No, no, I'm not asking. I'm not asking, but I'm, not, but I'm, but really, I'm, I'm not really. I don't, I don't want when nobody. Have they ever honored anyone? No, but I'm saying they I don't, honor gossip. Yeah, but I'm saying I don't really want nobody to give him like, oh, bow wow, you deserve this. That's he not does what I'm deserve. Saying. It. Yeah, he does, but that's not you're what I'm saying. That's not what I'm just saying. I'm it's just certain saying, things that should be reported it's, by it's everybody. It's just hip hop. Yeah. This, this is a hip hop thing. Like it's like this is hip hop. Yeah, right. Hundred percent. This is you talking about it. Like I said, this is what I had to do. I was ignoring the fact of what. The superpowers that Bow Wow come with. Mm-hmm. Before me, Bow Wow was signed to Dr. Dre mm-hmm. and Snoop Dogg mm-hmm. at five years old. He's the Forrest Gump of hip hop. Yes, one hundred percent. Never heard that one, but I like. But it. I'm just saying to say <laughs> He's that. He's seen everything. But mm-hmm. to say that, right? To say that and then look at it and be like, it's 2021. Right. It should be reported. Like. You you ain't gotta you ain't gotta say oh I fuck with Bow Wow that nigga but dope. You know what it is. Okay? All you gotta do is like yo do but you look, you could do, do it from a negative standpoint. Yeah, like, like I can't yo, believe he's doing this shit. Do you realize that Bow Wow selling out of yeah? Is Bow Wow se- did Bow Wow just sell Miss- out a show in New Jersey tonight? Right. You could do a dumb like that and make it look like yeah. you hating, but still like you ain't you it's ain't giving them in flowers. It's, it's just the fact that you have to acknowledge. Yeah, but look to your argument though. We in a business is where it's like what have you done for me lately type of shit. Motherfuckers can only remember what they can remember. Mm-hmm. It's no country it's for weird. old men. I, no, no, I, I know it's weird like that. So when you mentioned Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes is supposed to be the Steph Curry of the NFL, the new the new motherfucker on the block who's changing the landscape of how football and the quarterback was supposed to be played. But when the OG step up, and he got to face the youngin, and then he beats him. And then you look up and see how many accolades Tom got, and he's still winning it today, which we still are. It's it's different why the Tom Brady comparison is so off. It's like you got you you got to talk about who the fuck gonna win more rings in time. Nobody. Mm. It's like Steph just broke the record. Ain't nobody about to beat that shit on time. So. But but right now, Mahomes and he beat the is, right is, is now nigga. Watch. Jack, but what? So and that's he beat, all that matters right what, now. Watch this. <laughs> and he beat the right now nigga. Mm-hmm. Who all the kid washed him, cleaned him. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh nah, that'll make if you if you had a son and he done, psh, yeah he he did. But guess guess who sold more nah. jerseys after he beat him? Who? Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's just it's, how the world works. That's what I'm saying. That's a flowers thing. I'm not talking about flowers. I don't want nobody get. I don't. Well, I don't want nobody get confused. I'm not talking about the flowers. I'm just saying in hip hop in general. I just feel like I feel like I feel like this is one of the parts of hip hop. That being from the South actually is is the the downfall or down sparrow about being from the South. Mm-hmm. Because okay. the South, things happen in the South like that that are not reported as just a hip hop moment. And when they're not, I'm not, and it's not about, hey, give these guys a flowers. It's just just reported as a moment. Like, guys, this is 2021. Jaru, no. Fat Joe, no. Mm-mm. Fabulous? No. Nah, Joe get his shit. Mm. Well, Joe, 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 is Joe is doing great. Wait, wait, wait. With, I'm, with I'm, I'm asking. I'm, not, I'm talking about the people that was on 106 in part. Yeah. Mm. All I'm it. saying is just list the rappers mm. that was on 106 in part when Bow Wow was number one on 106 in part. You remember this, right? Of course. Name well, I mean, one I'm, of them I'm that's a, on tour. AJ and Free. Tom, okay. So of course I'm him one. Name <laughs> one that's on tour. None. That's selling out. 20,000 seat arenas. Okay, can I ask you this though? If Fat Joe sold out Madison Square Garden today, 
Do you think these outlets that you're asking for flowers from would record 100%. it? 100%. I no. completely disagree. If no. Fat Joe showed up. I completely out, disagree. What? I'm talking about, I'm not saying anything a about Fat Joe. A lot of these blogs, the nah, nah, they, they would, would never do that. They would not, not report it. What? They wouldn't. Come on. They, I'm they, telling you, they, you they would say? You know what they would say? Nah. They would say, yo, Drake sold out for a week, so y'all are pussy. Nah, nah. Why are you even using the word pussy? I don't think they would. Nah, I definitely, listen, by the way, one New York outlet which posts say something about this. One of these guys. It would be Charlemagne, whether it be, it's going to be something. Charlemagne from the South. Huh? Sir Charlemagne's from the South. Yeah, but he's, no, he's from New York now. I'm gonna stop. Don't do that. <laughs> he, 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 somebody would say, I'm saying, I don't, I, I, I believe that. I don't he, think they would. I do. I, we have I this argument with, with our friend Justice. Shout out to LVRN, everybody. Justice still, I feel like, has this Atlanta complex with New York shit. And we have such the opposite. Because I feel like y'all have dominated us my entire life. Mm. Maybe not Maul's life, but my life. Y'all have had everything. Musically. So I look at yeah, Justice, sure. and Justice and I are the same age. And I'm like, how you still have this New York complex over shit? Musically. I'm yeah. looking at y'all like, we need to get like you. <laughs> but media, media-wise. But that changed with the internet now, especially with COVID, too. Still, you don't need to go still, up to fucking New York no more? It's still For no, what? They, For they, what? They, <laughs> it's still no different. It's still no and difference. this hurts me to say as a New Yorker. Like, don't nah, think this is easy like, for me. With you saying that, you don't need to do that. You don't, but you still have to. It doesn't, Nori is still, in Miami. It still doesn't he's he's from Queens, but, he, but he, in, Miami, in Miami. Like, you Miami don't have to go to New York no more. Long time. Yeah, but, and no, but, it pains me to say you don't have to do nothing in New York no more. Yeah, I wouldn't say nothing. But he's a New Yorker. But you need that, you need that audience. Oh, it is. No, it the is. audience you need from New York. Don't get it twisted. That's a fact. But it's going to be there. But I'm saying as far as industry shit, you don't need New York It's going to be there. New York's so, like... And everyone in the industry in New York, to this ain't day, New York. New York is still like the number one market you gotta tap into. hundred percent. Shit don't move without New York City. That's a, you know what I'm saying. Well, I just said what I said. You I'm talking about industry shit. Yeah. Just because it's the honor, yeah. That's what I said. Media honor, wise, I'm just saying. We media, we're talking about blogs, but city wise, radio. everything though. Like that's how I feel. Like it's a different energy I get. Mm -hmm. Like when JD said, "Okay, we we sold out every fucking arena across the nation, right?" Went to Tampa. That's twenty thousand. If it it was crazy, JD was there. It was it was retarded from mm -hmm. top to bottom. But when we went to New York, when we go to New York. We prepare for that shit. We oh, look of course. Up, it's, like it's even as rappers, we look up. And when we go to New York, we know that shit feel like a Monday night football game. Mel, you from New York? You from Queens, nigga? You know how we feel. Mm -hmm. Like when we buy the oh the garden. Oh my God! Watch, can't mm -hmm. wait. Mm -hmm. Everything go down in the garden. Same you know what I'm saying? So we we to this day, niggas, even young niggas, we look forward to going to New York. Mm -hmm. Like that's always gonna be like to me the number one spot. Even oh. though the A's are home, Ohio's a city. Like, we know. Mm -hmm. But... Audience-wise, I agree. Nothing in the world New doesn't York move. is... Fuck America. The world don't move without New York City. I'm mm -hmm. saying with this industry shit, with the blog shit, and the people, like, that, that shit don't matter no more. And sometimes just, you don't you, want, you you don't want flowers page. from certain people. Word. Like, I just... I mean, I'm the type... I don't care if certain people are reporting... My stats and my accolades, like, like I don't, I don't, I don't do it for that. Yeah, but that's I'm what I'm saying. saying. As long as my peers, though, yeah, like the up. niggas that I'm in the game with, yeah, but see, they look up and be like, "Yo, he did what nah, last night?" Nah, nah, I've been fighting this forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just a thing. It's a thing because you just want, cause, cause, like I said, you want to, um, you just want people to know. I just want people to know. I don't care if, it, like I said, they can say whatever they want to say about the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not asking you to even give me a, uh, uh, your 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 no, re review You're on the they, They're not saying nothing. Yeah, they're not saying nothing. They're acting like it doesn't even exist, yeah. right? Yeah. And that 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 is partially why I'm sure I'm, this is a question that y'all want to allude to, but this is partially why I did what I did when I did what I did on that puff thing that day when we got on there about oh, the verses mm -hmm. because I felt today. like here we go. I felt like viral. the people that was screaming what they scream about Puff, they've heard it. They've seen it mm -hmm. because New York spills it out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I guarantee you it's 50 records that I did that a majority of them people don't know about mm -hmm. because I'm here in Atlanta and it, and what happens with Bow Wow Tour mm -hmm. has happened with my records and mm -hmm. what has happened with these artists and has happened with these... You've heard the records, but you don't know what they've done. Be, and and it, unless JD starts popping shit and talking and going crazy, you don't even be knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I seen somebody yesterday, and he's like, yo, I mean, how much ice cream are you going to post? Do you make music anymore? And I'm like, damn, you, you know, do... Do you realize that I graduated from the class of 92? Mm. 
And Ari Lennox record might be number one in the next two weeks. Phenomenal record. Mm-hmm. Like, Shout out to Ari. Agreed. What are we talking about? Like, I'm so, I'm so, so but I had to, I have to say this, yeah, right? Okay. You I see what I'm saying? Yeah. I have to say this. There's yeah. nobody going to say, yo, do y'all realize that this nigga started in 92? Right. And I'm not asking you to give me my flowers. I'm not even asking you to say, yo, the record's jamming. No, I get it. I want yeah. you to say, who? Never have a, been a nigga do it this long for this hard for this. this yeah. Okay. What hoes say? Yeah. That's me. Yeah. Can, can I ask? Can I ask you a very white therapy? Can you take a shot. No. Can I no, ask no, you a very white therapy years. question? Yeah. Back to you deciding when you saw Criss Cross getting all them cookies for free mm-hmm. in that mall mm-hmm. and said, "No, nah, they got something. I want to write for them. I want to be behind them and make them the stars." Mm-hmm. You don't feel like you've done that your whole career and didn't do the puff route where even though I am helping make these records, I'm gonna make sure I'm next to them, not behind them. Oh no, 100%. So I feel like when you made that decision, when you saw them getting the free cookies, has come to this point of what you upset about and saying people not knowing about your whole legacy. No, no. Because you didn't have to yell it. No, but I'm not. You just did it. But that's what I'm saying, I'm not upset. This is the thing. Upset is the wrong word, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not upset. What I feel like, I feel like this. I feel like we talk, we talk about things in this in this industry and in this sphere and we have questions about things and if you don't mention what I'm saying you won't get the answers to why all right, right. so say for instance R&B music right R&B music today will never sound like R&B music sounded like you guys might like it or somebody else might like it yeah. because there's nobody from 1992 in the top 10 chart on in the top 10 on the charts in 21 mm-hmm. right that's a that's a conversation I that ain't got nothing to do with Jermaine getting no flowers this is a conversation that you got to be like guys listen you do realize the existence of R&B that we love or whoever maybe you maybe you don't if you don't like it but that new edition, Bobby Brown, I'll be sure era. Mm-hmm. None of them producers are nowhere to be found. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's all I'm saying. This is all I'm saying is we got to start talking about this because people keep arguing about music. Like why R&B music ain't this good. And this is, this is why. Right. It's not because the artists ain't good. Right. It's because the new artists, they not being trained by nobody. Cause the people that train me ain't, you know, my story. I said I ran into Babyface. Of course. Right. Who is these people running into? But that's where producer tags and producers like Puff, depending on how you view him as a producer, them getting in front of shit. That's important because that keeps their legacy going and makes the regular consumer, not the nerd like me, that'll look in the fucking album credits and know who did the new edition shit. You have to be that producer that steps up and say, "Hey, I made this fucking record." That's going to keep you relevant because the younger artists are going to be like, wait, that shit I grew up on, JD did that shit. So but you that, still no one in New Edition stepped up and said, hey, I produced the New Edition shit. Yeah, like, but it I'm didn't happen. You, but that's what I'm saying. You still <laughs> that's speak- why the producer tags annoy the fuck out of me, but I get it. But, I totally get it. But I'm saying you still speaking about producer. I'm just speaking about the genre in itself. Mm. The genre in itself. What's the genre now? With R. Kelly being gone, he's 50% of the R&B of R&B music that mm-hmm. that was there, right? So then you had me, you have Puff, you have Dark Child, you have... Mm-hmm. Don't start naming because then we're going to leave someone out and it's going to get... N- well, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, <laughs> people know. I'm not saying whatever. Yeah, we, we know. But what I'm saying is all of these people was covering these this period of time, right? Yeah. When you look at the charts now, you don't see any of them names, mm-hmm. right? And I... Like, that's what I posted the other day when I said, I'm saying, like, I wasn't dissing nobody and I wasn't trying to throw no shots at nobody. I'm saying, God damn, I'm looking at the shit saying, I came out in 92 and I'm the only person. Right. I get it. But, but that's, that's wow. Okay, but that's why Versus is important. And the conversation you have with Puff is the next conversation we need to have about Versus. It's got to happen. Fuck because, that. because, what the hell and I, I, I said this on a podcast. Drake, Prior nigga. to, before we even sat down. <laughs> nah, Drake, yeah, nah, hold on, hold on. Crazy. Drink that shit. Fuck that. We nah, been drinking. Nah, 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 I'm good. I'm cool. You gonna drink? Nah, nah, I'm good. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Right. I, 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 <laughs> <Nah, I'm not. laughs> I said, all right, if we want to go through these versus conversations with producers, because that, that's what started that Man, whole fuck conversation. Man, that. How spicy was that? 
Cause that shit felt a little spicy. It, it felt was like real, it was, it was no, real spicy. But I'm gonna get to the like, shit I'm, that he couldn't really say. Like, man, it was fuck, some listen. shit being said, and I saw it when it kind of got. You started he couldn't looking say, at the "Let's camera, laugh." Like, the three look, of us in a room. Look, who can come out with a record without help? The same look. way. The same way you was just talking. Like, wait, do you know? Like, I saw some of that with the. Yeah, Puff get your shit off right now, nigga. Why we can't get your shit off? Like I saw Puff saying, "Like, what you gonna do? Play a bunch of kid records, play the." And I saw that's when you was like, "Wait, hold up. Do you know? Like, I." And then you Yo, played, and then Puff shit. played a record, and he was like, "I wrote that." <laughs> like, like, no, no, I said you didn't write that. Oh yeah, yeah you didn't write that. I'm saying. You didn't write talk that. Talk your shit. That's the, so that's like, how much question. of that was like really? Man, fuck like, that, JD. Talk your shit. And <laughs> on top of that, because I I know Dre's name was being thrown around, around in that a lot. Doctor Dre's name was being thrown around a lot. Did you and Dre squash that shit? Yeah. Y'all talk. Y'all cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. I remember. See, I'm. I, I remember yeah, all of that shit. I remember it too. I never understood why. But you know. Interesting thing. Get to the puff shit, nigga. The interesting thing about... <laughs> fuck that. The Henny just said, nigga, get to the puff shit. The, the Henny just fuck said all that. She just poured it. <laughs> fuck, I know, yeah. It was just poured. Just I'm about to go, that's, yo, that's the Henny listen, from two hours ago, bro. Wait, about to, hey, hold up. Why don't you put this in there? What? Put drink there. Nah, because this shit uh, really turn Yo, Nori, yeah. Nori, we come from your nah, spot. Right, listen, his drink I want JD to talk his shit. You know why? Because he never, like... JD is so fucking exactly, and that's man. what I'm saying. All right, but look, look, okay, listen, 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 that's what I said in the XXL mm -hmm. a while ago. Mm -hmm. There was a Scratch magazine. I think I said that. I said, yo, if you put, Shout Scratch, if you put me. I, but it was it was about me Timbaland and and Dre at the time, mm -hmm. right? And, Timbo is another one of those producers. And, and Drayden, Drayden liked the comment, and I, and you know, and then so Dre and and then Timbaland was rocking with Dre at the time, so then both of them teamed up on me and basically did a diss record. Um, but yeah, I, 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 that conversation that we was having it was very interesting to me because I'm like, you know, one, I fuck with Puff, mm -hmm. um, and and. Versus never would make me not fuck with Puff. Puff, Puff Daddy's my man. Yes. He's Puff Daddy. Legend, legend, right? legend, legend. Um, and what he did and what he does in in in, in this business is amazing, and how he does it is amazing. Mm -hmm. But, but when it come to getting in this box and sitting in this motherfucker and writing a song from scratch to finish, mm -hmm. finding an artist. Mm -hmm. Putting the artist on the song and then finishing it and giving it to y'all as a product, I don't know. I don't know six people that y'all that people even mention today that do that. Damn, mm. I'm a, I'm a what, what, what do you What do you think? Uh, I don't know <laughs> six of them. All right. Now. What? Uh, wait, 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 what? Can, I, can I ask a question I know you won't I, answer? I like how you talking right now. <laughs> no, I, no, I like saying. it too. Can, I, I, can I, I, I ask a question you I know you won't answer? Right <laughs> what you think Dre lack? What you think Swizz lack? What you think Tim lack? What you think Puff lack? Where they can't... Well, I mean, we I, lack I, everybody I, 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 want, I want... No, no, no. Last, no, no. That's not, no, that's not a question. I, I don't think he's going to answer. I'm not saying they... I'm not saying they lack. It's not a lack. It's just a thing that they don't... I don't think they cared about doing these things. By the way, I told you in the beginning of this, I might not have wanted to be a writer... But I ain't had no choice. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. right. I think Dre had a choice. Circumstances. He had, that you, you know, he had Snoop Dogg around. You got Snoop Dogg and DOC around you. Like, right. fuck, I got a rifle. I'm not gonna write no. You know what right. I mean? Um, um, Puff was from a different way. That way he did it. I don't know that he cared to write. He had Devonte around. You got, you know what I mean? You got. You got all these. You got. I'll be sure. You got all these people. You got Great, greatest. You know, you music. got all these different Outside things that you can pull from. Puff. I just feel like I don't know if they I don't know if they lack it. I just feel like they have they was in a position that didn't call for them to do that. Yeah. Gotcha. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. With like same thing with Timberland. Mm -hmm. Timberland had Missy. What you gonna do? Mm -hmm. you, just, mm -hmm. you gonna try to outright her? Right. <laughs> right. I got I got something for you. Right. What the fuck? Like right. let me hear what you got, right? Mm -hmm. She you know what I mean? I didn't have that I didn't have that 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 let that luxury. To have somebody just sitting in a room that's amazing and be like, Jermaine, here you go, here go a song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in a room by myself mm -hmm. and I'm like, shit. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> do this shit. Guess, I, guess got, I gotta make I, some I shit. Got, you know, I'm thinking I hear something, you know what I'm saying? But so, but that, that, I felt like, I feel like when we start, the way Versus is now, right? 
and it's a performance. Yeah. And it's people on stage and people doing what they got to do. You know who made it that way, though, right? Yeah, Bow Wow actually started that with with him and Soldier Boy, um, mm-hmm. with the with the actually really performing. When he had the goons behind him in the video. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. no. On, so, on, 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 on to me, that was the just that started. No, that, that was like the old, the, you know what I'm saying? I'm the, fucking the, with you. The, the way, but <laughs> no, on versus, look, no, no, versus, no, 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 shit. Because the, the shit that motherfuckers don't know is when Jermaine was like, "Man, is it official? Y'all really go?" I'm like, "Nigga, we about to really do it." Yeah. So Jermaine was like, "Look, you ain't gonna be able to perform like that." Got energy that it does ain't gonna. I'm like, JD, listen, I ain't gonna sign up for this motherfucker if I can't perform. Like, mm-hmm. I gotta perform. Mm-hmm. That's my specialty. Mm-hmm. I gotta show the world, remind them what we just talked about, right? Facts. Niggas Not forget it. quickly mm-hmm. in this day and age, right? So I'm like, look, I'm not even gonna do it if I can't do it how I do it. Mm-hmm. So when we did it, niggas really had no choice. And I think after that, that's when I told Tim at Puff House. When we FaceTimed you when I was at Puff House. By the way, party, by I was like, yo, Tim. Let me cut you off. I said, Tim, I'll change the landscape of this version shit. Niggas uh, gotta perform there. Uh, Any uh, rapper that come out uh, for us. Uh, let me give you a flower. They, gotta, they gotta fucking like perform. That's, that's another that's another one I wanna talk about. I don't know somebody gonna be like, like JD, you just bitter. I'm not bitter. Listen. But I will say this. You're not coming on off some that way. popping shit by the way. shit. Yeah, and I ain't even been drinking. I'm just popping shit. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm gonna pop my shit. Bow Wow and Soldier Boy. Still have had more numbers than the last four verses that came out. That's right. And I don't care how many artists they just had perform. These niggas had six hundred and fifty thousand people in their room. Mm. I mean, Soldier Boy and Bout, they come from the internet era. This they were the first I'm, two artists. This is, what, this is what I'm saying. Why Nobody won't you okay. mention it? Yeah. Okay. You had three six mafia and the whole hip hop. Community mm-hmm. and they ain't bust four hundred thousand. Can I put mm-hmm. it this way? We know how fickle the internet is, right? The internet is the most fickle place on yeah, earth. For sure. If Bow Wow and Soldier Boy are the godfathers it's of up. it, it's what up. do you think is gonna happen? It's up. I get it. I just, I, I'm saying. No, no, I'm saying they're not gonna be because the internet yeah, moves you, so quick. You they're gonna forget. They're up. gonna you forget got, their forefathers somebody, until it's time. Somebody, somebody got to make mention. Somebody, somebody got to say something. Man, yeah. it ain't, it ain't I like, like I said. It ain't even like a. You're not giving nobody no flowers. These is real numbers. Yeah. It ain't like I'm saying like, hey guys, look, we out here selling records. No. Mm-hmm. Man, why do I? Why Y'all know that's going on, right? I'm, I'm saying the internet is so fucking fickle. <laughs> of course they'll forget their godfathers and not try to fucking promote I, them and I, give them their actual I, flowers. I just, there's I, no. I, real I believe. Route. Let me ask you this. More for that shit. Let me ask you this. You think if Bow Wow was from New York, he'd have more pu- publicity about what he does as It'd as far as his uh? It'll be the same. Uh, uh, he always he done, can't get Mr. no bigger than he was, bro. Yeah, but I'm Here's saying, thing, if, if Bow Wow was from New York, I don't think he would have approached his career the same way, and I don't think it would have been the same way. Yeah. So yeah, I don't even know if we get to nah, this but, point uh, yeah, if Bow Wow you, was from yeah, New York. but you're looking at, I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. I'm saying, I, I, just feel, I just feel like we, I feel like it's a piece missing to Southern hip hop, right? And I feel like when accolades come in Southern hip hop, it's not looked at on the same level as other as as those that come from New York and LA by the way I feel like it's de- I feel like it's definitely looked at on a different space I feel like for okay. Bow is different though cuz he yeah. he came in so young right and the content now is so violent and you know drug use and shit like that and it will be hard for us to accept Bow Wow and that's cuz it's like nigga we watched you grow up you can't start talking like crazy like these new artists that's coming up out of the streets because we watched you from 12, 13, 14, movie star, hostings, all of these things. Like, you've been out of here. You've been in another, a superstar forever. So now it's like the content and what these younger kids want is more grimy. It's more street. It's more violent. Like, they want that. But you know that ain't true, though. As far as what? Most of it ain't true. Oh, no, what they saying, no, we know that. But I'm just saying, from Bow, they I not going to even accept so like, it. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not. Look, I think we in the era of kids right? telling the truth. Huh? And there it is. He just beat me to the punch. <laughs> I, so I think me, the kid, like, the kid rapper has changed. It has. No, so for me, it's like, like no, I have to. You go, these kids you, from you, Chicago you is fourteen, and, and they have, talking shit. Have, they really have, doing. I have to bring this up, right? This, but you know, it's more real shit than you, just you, killing you, and all that type of shit. That's a fact. But you know, I have to bring this up, right? What? Huh? Okay, go there. You know, I have to bring this up. Go there. I ain't tripping. I mean, go there. It sounds like me and my pops at Thanksgiving. No, I'm just saying, you know, I had a little TV show called The Rap Game, right? Mm-hmm. The first person who won was Miss Mulatto, right? I remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Mulatto. Or Lotto now. 
That's three different people you just named, right? You do realize that? No. How's it three different people? I mean, <laughs> you ain't catch what I just said. Triple entendre of changing no, her name. I mean, it could be a double entendre, but no, well, she's, it's three different people. If you watched on my show, okay, she, she wasn't the girl that you see now. Okay, that's what you said. Right? Oh, okay, all right, yeah. right. I thought you were trying to tell me like she went from Miss. She went remember. from Miss Mulatto to Big Lotto. Lotto well, to Big Lotto, right? Now she's whatever, whatever. But cancel culture did that to some degree. Okay, but I'm just saying, when you watch it, do you, you know, nobody speaks on what they seen. They watch this. Mm -hmm. People watch. Okay. You watch this girl be what she says she is now that you know you didn't see her. Mm -hmm. I see what you're saying. You, you know, you, yeah. you've seen this. Mm -hmm. Okay. You watched it. So I don't know that when you say that about if Bow Wow was doing it, I don't know why. But I mean, that's not what I would... That's not what you want him to do. Him yeah, to yeah, do. yeah, I get it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't it. even yeah, suggest yeah, yeah. him to do that. That's yeah. dumb anyway. Yeah. But I'm saying, I'm watching people watch people do this mm -hmm. and don't care. But you mm. feel Lotto? I don't feel like she talk about some wild shit that we wouldn't believe she would have done after that show. Does she say some shit that maybe I missed? That no, not is in the degree not, of like no, what? Not, come on, not, we know it's not, not true. Not after the show, but I'm saying you basically watched her grow up on that TV show. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you do realize, like, the first season when she won, mm -hmm. I brought her back on the second season to rock with the second winner. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. So, therefore, did you hear her talking the way she was talking at that time? I'm not writing the raps. Right. You understand what I'm saying? This is mm -hmm. a, a new year, by the way. Mm -hmm. The third year, I brought her back again. And we had all three, you know what I'm saying, start having all three winners. Mm -hmm. Did you hear a rap like that then? Mm -mm. No, right? There's nothing wrong with it. What I'm saying is the audience is watching this and allowing you to do whatever the fuck you want to do. accepting it, yeah. Okay. You, know, you see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They don't, you know. I mean, in her defense, I've, I've been in the studio with her. <coughs> I've, I've, I've watched her write her raps that no, no, exact I'm saying, same way. She, and, no, she's, and, and she's done, yeah, from like, the jump. She, I, I'm, but you know how I be feeling though? It's like, I said she was the winner. Like, she, no, always, she can rap. No, but you know I always blame shit that I don't understand in this time of age though? It's just on the... It's different eras, like with basketball. Like JD, like right now, it's niggas that feel like Steph Curry better than Jordan. Mm -hmm. Just a point of what they see. You know what I'm saying? They like, don't know what they're talking about, but, but right? they, but they like the three pointer but, more than they love the actual. And it's full like game. it's yeah. changing the new wave of the game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, but I mean, we one, live in an era um, where I feel like if one thing you, can can end that though. That's the thing about basketball. That? That's why I don't even understand that whole conversation. But it's true. No, it's not because it's JD, like yeah, because if you have listen. If my, you, my dog, like right now, on on Shy's Christmas list was, Daddy, I want some Air Jordan ones. She got all the motherfuckers, but she want more. Mm -hmm. If I say Dad, what do Michael Jordan do? She gonna say shoes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's still the substance and DNA of what have you done for me lately? That's yeah. how the whole game been. That's what it is. This whole time. Yeah, but we but but we not talking about we not talking about that. You going let's go man for man. At the end of the day, if the finals come and as good as Steph Curry is, is KD in the picture? He don't win the championship. Ain't no need for you to even have a conversation about him being better than Jordan. Because we done seen Jordan be put in that same hot box, and he wins. Yeah, for the record, nobody's better than Michael Jordan. That's just... But we've, we've, we've also seen... You know what I'm saying? We've seen <laughs> we, Braun we, lose we, and we, still we, call him the GOAT. Yeah. So, huh? go, it's error. We, we've seen Braun nigga lose Mel multiple times. Like, he's he's still the GOAT to so many right people. Now, said, what? Fuck we've seen Braun really? lose a couple Braun times, and he's still the GOAT to a lot of people. That's it. You know why? Why? Braun is his Jordan. Tell me. You know what I'm saying? Who you know went to three different teams and took him to the championship. I don't know nobody. Michael Jordan didn't even do this. Right. Just the metaphor. Right? I'm saying about. that in itself to me makes LeBron James a GOAT. He mm -hmm. is I'll a go, GOAT yes. because he took three different teams to the championship and they won. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know nobody that did that. Yeah. Michael Jordan left the Bulls, it was over with. Mm -hmm. Right? Came back three Peter. You know what I mean? Like twice. Yeah, I'm saying when he left the Bulls saying. and went to Washington. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That was for fun though. Huh? That was for fun. Yeah, I'm just saying still. You gotta give LeBron that for that, right? Yeah. I just feel like it's always about it's always a thing. Like when you when you say that who's better than who, 
it's it's one thing that already can always say like, yeah, but have you done this right? It's the same thing like with Hove, right? I was I I was watching, um, <laughs> I was watching uh, because I'm just getting ready to say something. I was watching, <laughs> um, <laughs> I was watching the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. And even for me, a person that's been around Hove before Hove was what people know Hove is now, to hear them say, this nigga got more nominations, Grammy nominations than any artist ever. Mm-hmm. Why do rappers keep saying they fucking with him? Right. This is what I'm saying. Like, what? But you supposed to feel that way, though, as an MC, though. I mean, you can, you, feel, you can feel that way. Sometimes you gotta shut up. Yeah, yeah. Niggas got their own accolades. Sometimes you gotta shut up. Niggas got shit that Drake got. Niggas ain't gonna beat. Okay, a lot of times though, that's he can talk his shit. That's the talk his shit. Dog can talk it. But I'm saying, okay. Now we let's get back to the conversation. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That that I I just feel like I. So is the puff is the puff versus happening? I don't think so. Why not? Because I feel like it's 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 a performance based thing now, mm-hmm. and majority of Puff records, who's gonna perform? I mean, you could bring people out on stage. That's part of the performance. And, and Puff yeah, is one of the greatest the locks, performers. But you can't have nobody do big verses. And I don't know yeah. that Mace would come out with him no more, mm-hmm. right? So so I don't know that I I don't think it would happen based on that. Yeah, um, I would love to see that though. All my people, we rocking. Yeah, so that's you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and and we coming with, the, with a whole lot of energy. So mm-hmm. I, that I was some that was something on that on that IG live thing with you and Puff that I, I kind of noticed. I was like, I think that people just really don't know the extent of JD's like producing and songwriting. Like we know obviously the big hits, or some people know the big big hits, but. Even in things Puff was saying, I was like, Puff ain't giving JD enough credit right now. But also Puff, also Puff was, and not and Puff and anybody else that thinks about this battle, they actually try to downplay the Bow Wow era. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. When we get into the two thousand ones, two thousand twos, two thousand three era of So So Death, mm-hmm. I don't know that Bad Boy was even in existence. Mm-hmm. Sure. Personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know what you mean. I don't know. I mean, I never seen a bad boy, but it wasn't, of course. I never seen a bad boy record number one on 106 apart. At that time, no. But that's not fair because, I mean, they had their era, and as a lot of labels do, they move on and have to. No, you can't say that's not fair. We talking about going against me. It's not fair against other people. When you talking about me, though. <laughs> Get your shit But on. you can do, you can do <laughs> verses. We talking about me. A lot of verses ain't the same <laughs> nah, era. Nah, 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 no, hey, you no, know no, what? No, I thought no, it was no. going to be like me coming up here. No, no, and no. It was going, no. Like, but it's going viral. No, let him get his shit off. No, no, no. I'm just smoking. No, let him get his shit off. I'm saying the question. Let me know when you're ready for my question. I'm saying you said. The big homie right now. I'm saying this is what. For anybody that's challenging me. Right? If you gotta challenge me, we gonna go through, we gonna start when we start, right? Mm-hmm. Just say we started in the 90, one, man, we started in 94. Okay. Right? And me and Puff went head up, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. Mm-hmm. That's when shit start getting dark at. Yeah. Okay. That's when it's gonna start getting dark. But, they, but, see, but some will argue that Puff has enough from the 90s oh, you can't, you and, can't and, and you to kind of to kind of to make it a fight to and make it a fight at, you gotta look at if y'all going 20 if y'all going 20 right if y'all going 20, this, right? this y'all going night, 20 i'm just i'm i'm saying all i'm saying is all i'm saying is the bow wow era you can't discredit that i know what you mean is a is a era and that dirty money album is fine don't that, get twisted huh that dirty money album is fine don't get it twisted but I told you, but look, I told you. I just you, want to see his face. Saying, look, I just want to see his face. All I do is I just want to see his face. trying to have for me. Who? I mean, Mace might be like, like, like this going. That's nah, we talking about 2000. But, but listen, Puff, I can't change his, his focus. I, I, I know okay. what JD is He was doing reality. I want him to say it. I'm going to let the big homie say this. Listen, man, all y'all niggas saying this shit, fuck this shit. I am hip hop. Right. When it come to being hip hop, you up. go back old and I go new. Roll who up. won? Roll up. That's what it is, nigga. Especially if I go new shit that's big. Bow Wow's first album, his first album in two thousand one sold three million. 
Mm -hmm. That's not, that's before we get to him in Sierra, before we get to him in o Omarion, before we get to him in Chris Brown, before the real hits that niggas really be talking about. Mm -hmm. They got a whole COVID strand. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even talk to this dude. I can't talk. Yo, I can't. That's what I'm saying. So I'm saying, uh, this is what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that, that that that's a part of it that I feel like, like I said, majority mm. of people, they, you know, even when I look at people, when they talk about me and they say <laughs> something about Jermaine Dupree, they say, he's a legendary producer in the 90s. Do you know when Bow Wow came out, people? Mm. Do you know when Confessions came out? Mm. Do you know when Emancipation of Mimi came out? Mm. It wasn't in the nineties. No. Right. Right. Not even close. Yeah, this was wilding right now. I love what my niggas. No, I want him to talk this to shit. This was this a legend. This is talking shit. I'm after the big homie. I love when he talking. I ain't heard two thousand one, two, two, three, four, four five, like six, seven. Emancipation of Mimi came out in two thousand seven. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. People be forgetting about that whole little patch of records. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. Puff Daddy ain't got nothing for 2007. Not on Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. No. No way. Listen, man. I need. I want to see that happen. Somebody pull up Puff you 2007. You ain't, you ain't got to do it. interview in 2021. <laughs> I, I ain't going to lie. I would. I would. I would. Saying, I, not on Bad this Boy. Is, this is why we need the verses, though. Because I feel like once you have that, <coughs> people start hearing these records now, and it's, it comes back to them like, oh, shit. And like I said, people don't even know... Half of those shit, that shit you just said, a lot of people forgot about that. They don't even, they're not even thinking about that. Puff is more popular, you know, he 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 has probably the records that people gravitate to more in the club when it comes on. So that's what they're thinking when they think verses. When the record drop, I'm like, oh yeah, but you talking about records that people just completely forgot about. But and look. I understand why you like, yo, why, how did y'all just forget about that 2007 like you but said, Puff, that I ain't gonna lie though. Puff, when it to verses, Puff is a promoter first. JD is a musician first. But look, one it's thing I learned about verses, and I told JD this, like, that shit different. We done seen the biggest niggas who got, like, might have more number ones. Yeah, that's, like, oh, yeah, and that's, by the way, that's fucked up. And that's what I think. Is. You know what I'm saying? I get and fucked I, up. And I, I seen it. I ain't gonna say no, but I seen it. You know what I'm saying? And I think Puff said that that day. He was like, JD, what you gonna do? You gonna play them Mariah records? Right? Certain shit gonna And I'm like, I'll say names. When we watch Nelly and Luda, who could ever say Nelly? That era, no one could compare Nelly's was... era of that time ever. Mm -hmm. I walked into that saying, damn, yo, Luna might get washed. And then what happened? It's different when you really match up those records and cultural shit moments. It's different. I felt it. Yeah, but it's, see. It's way but different. See, but shit hit different mm -hmm. in verses. But that's what I'm different. saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That shit hit different. That's what I'm trying I'm agreeing with you. Nah, JD was at our shit. I'm like, that's JD, what this list I'm doing. He like this. That's what I'm right. trying to tell you. All right. Okay. Nah. It's up. So that was you. You, got you picked the set list yourself? Yeah. Ain't nobody help me. We put that shit together. Me and my DJ, DJ Just, mm -hmm. put that shit together in motion. JD, no. Said, JD, this is what we doing. He like, okay. You ain't done that in. Yeah, that's going. Okay. This is how we about to. Okay. And we going to walk away with the dub. And this. Mm. Say no more. Quick, quickly before we get to what pissed you off on the phone, because I do want to get to that. Um, I do want to ask because because of what you're saying. Like I don't think a lot of people know that you produced the the Ari record that's out now that is about to be number one. You be that's with Division, you be with Ty, you, you really be with the new generation. You what almost you, can't what you, come what you to think about the whisper, What you think about the whisper singers of R and B right now? And how do you pick who you work with and who's worthy? to come into this studio. Well, because I, r and I think, is in a very good place, but it's changed drastically when it comes to vocals. Well, I just, like I said, I just really realized why r and is changed. And it's because nobody's going in the studio. Mary J. Bly's got a new single produced by DJ Khaled. I hate it. I don't like it. <laughs> See, and we gotta be like the, the thumbnails of this shit. Like, but listen, okay, I'm gonna cool. be honest. All I don't right. like that record. Mean, and I so love Mary. I love Talent. But listen, I don't like okay, that record. So my point is too much scent. Listen, my point is this. My point. My point is this. When, not when. What's the last number one R and B record that Khaled made? Has Khaled had, had has a, a R and B? Exactly. I don't, yeah, I don't even know if I guess the Bryson Tiller and Rihanna one would be pop to me. That wouldn't be R&B. Okay, so this is my point. That's what I'm saying. You got a legendary artist like Mary J. Blige going in the studio with people that don't make 
the music that she makes. Yeah. This was exactly what yeah. we were talking about. This, this is, exact this, record. This, this yeah. is saying what I was saying. This is what's happening in R and B, right? Mm -hmm. So take, say for instance, Chloe, right? Mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, I is the is the Chloe record a hip hop record or an R and B song to you? Uh, it sounds like a hard drive record that a label said. I think this will work with the algorithms. It's hip hop. Yeah. Okay. I'm just telling you what, what it sounds like I would, to me. I would I would say still, you use her. She's an R and B artist. They went to murder beats. Yeah. Like it's hip hop. You're not you're not gonna get Yeah. Chords from Babyface, mm -hmm. chords no. from Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, chords from Dark Child. No warmth. There'll be chords no warmth. from even Pharrell. You're not gonna get none of that shit that you probably like from R and B mm -hmm. from these guys that they people are going to get. But you know why that is though, because now people are more concerned with just putting the names that Mary J. Blige produced by Khaled. It's the name. It's not so much the art and what makes sense no more. Because if you see Khaled and Mary J. Blige, you're going to click on it just because those are names that you click on. But if now if you see an amazing R&B producer that you don't know, but it makes more sense sonically and it's a smash, people might not run to click it because they don't recognize that name. Yeah, yeah. but I understand that. But I'm saying it's just like this. When I used to, when, when I'd be in my office, I used to love having Lil Jon and... Bow Wow and all the artists come up to the to the office and just be in the office and playing music and talking shit. You see how fast y'all said what y'all said about that Khaled, mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige Because record? we talked about it mm -hmm. already off exactly what he just said. I said Mary's needs better people around her. Her manager needs to know that this is out of touch. You're yeah, just trying to find the know, name. You need to find the music. They, they but you know, know what else though? One thing I can relate to, also Mary on, on what the number one show on Stars right now. Mm -hmm. Acting. So yeah, just killing shit. Exactly. So sometimes, you know, you, you lose touch. Relax a day just on yeah. the fact that I ain't I'm been in tune with that. So yeah. you've been an actress too. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, I can feel that. I know how that shit feel. Mm -hmm. But the music like, suffers then because now you're out of touch. Yeah, but I'm on And this. now you just going but with you're such a legend in the other genre of what you do. I can always come back to that. You but that's, but that's, but you and can't, that's, that's why I fuck shit out with 50. 50 decided, yo, I'm just going on the next shit. But you know that's a curse, though. You know they say that's a curse. Once you go too far into the acting and all that, I as, did. A, as a musician, I it's hard it to come back. Ago. I just did it for two months. I just I just seen them all. I just did it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't know if that's just true. Because after Like Mike, you had at least two or three big hits, I feel like, after Like Mike. Facts. Four... Facts. They ain't doing no movies after Like Mike, though. What? Huh? What? Wasn't him and Salons after, trying to go to after, Cedric the Entertainer's after, after like crib Mike. or something? What? What movie was I'm that? I'm saying after, you did I after Like Mike. I'm talking about not right after Like Mike, though. I mean, but like two no, years. No, not two right years after, after Like Mike. You nah, Tom Spelling came right more. two years after that. But Come on. Yeah, I'm okay, talking about, I'm, I'm just what I'm saying. Not, he didn't do no movies right after Like Mike. He didn't go Will Smith. Exactly. Where no, even though he should have. We did 50 million at the box office. He should have did Will Smith. I was telling him, do Will Smith. No, but we still won because with the with the movie came the like Mike soundtrack which you had on your label that's how the whole that's why to this day and this shit is crazy I'm bringing this up even though it's Curtis Blow song oh, no, niggas right. no, think Curtis that Blow it's records. my song oh basketball mm -hmm. basketball like the whole world thinks that belongs to me mm -hmm. like that's my song like like it's the craziest shit in the world so you're right like we after we did the movie it went back to the soundtrack from the soundtrack became a single from that came Take It Home with Pharrell and then it was and on no, the gone. hardball, y'all try. I like the the. I'd like to try to do with the Lils on the hardball soundtrack. Who you think got who? Do y'all Lil Wayne on that record? I feel like we was all like. No one even gonna know the record we talking about. Yeah, but they gonna look it up though. Then they're gonna remember it's a hit. Then they're gonna remember it's a hit. Pause. No, no, we don't pause, know it. Pause, pause. They're gonna know it's a hit after that. Wait, wait. They do know it was number one on one hundred and six in part. That's what I'm but saying. But they was kids. You have to remind kids. The, yeah. You have to. Yo, oh shit. That was, that was the shit I grew up on. No, yeah. the kids. Yeah. That's your age. <laughs> I know. They know that song. Mm -hmm. They wanted him to perform that song because Sammy was no on cap. that tour. They don't even know Lil Zane was in a uh, uh, Doctor Doolittle. Like they're gonna. Oh I shit. Oh wait, I went back to Doctor. <laughs> See exactly. What about Lil Zane? Say Lil Zane was in BMF. I. <laughs> I'm talking about a different Lil Zane. <laughs> it's just Zane now. It's not even Lil Zane. Oh, he's a grown it's, it's ass man. Zane. <laughs> Zane to be Lil Zane. You know what my shit is though? Like, will is relevant though? Like, cause That's a good speaking question. of a nigga like a Lil Zane, right? Somebody who I feel is on one of the like most. And Jane, you might look crazy, but like from my era, like the most iconic like R and B record. Like he has a memorable verse on the one twelve record. Like his verse is very memorable. Like. 
we talk about relevance when we speak of him because as we just said his name it's like he is in the biggest if not one of the biggest like urban shows that's out right now so it's like when we speak on relevance like what is what is really the definition of relevance is it current shit is it like like what are we basing that word off on because i hear that shit well yeah so it much. would have to be current if it's relevant you know, uh right? yeah, I, so. I think i think it's a in the eye of the beholder to be quite honest which okay. what what's really relevant to you back to the platforms that matter and the people that matter am i relevant to the shit that matters to me am i being talked about in the places i want to be talked about am i have the money i have do i have the accolades i have yeah it's an eye Relevancy is in the eye of the beholder at this point because the internet, this shit has spread everything across the world. I agree. It, it's every little pocket. There's no more little niche shit no more. It's even smaller than niche. So it's in how you feel. Smaller and, than niche. And, and like, do you want to be relevant right now? Because look what is relevant. And I'm not even talking about music at this point. We could put this to the entire world. We could do this with the presidency race. Like, do we want to be relevant? Because relevancy is bullshit. It's a bunch of nonsense. I don't, I don't know if I care so much about relevancy. I'd rather just, when people get it and they go back to it, they be like, well, he been putting out hot shit. Okay. Like, a lot of motherfuckers go fast and they hit the top and it's like, oh, shit, yeah. But then they fizz out and it's over with. Like, I'd rather it be cons a cons like a JD, consistent years of niggas been hits for 30, 30 years. Y'all may not be talking about it. I may not be relevant in, in certain conversations and round tables because y'all just not talking about it for whatever reason. But if somebody throws my name on the table, and they're like, damn, and then you start rolling through the files and you're looking like, oh, he's been putting out shit since 2001 that's been... Yeah, see, I don't I don't even get caught up in that. I don't I even... I, I, I never even worry about that relevance. Yeah, but you know, I, that's what I'm saying. You yeah, don't, I don't even... I don't even know what that means. Because right, yeah. I feel like the one thing that people... Like I said, I'm a numbers guy. Mm -hmm. What people don't understand about me is I play the numbers. And the numbers that I play is that every mogul that people compare me to I'm younger than them. Mm. So in every dance that we be talking about, even like the way we just, when you talking about academics page and da-da-da-da, and his audience is younger, I don't think people be understanding that. I'm younger than Puff. I'm younger than Jay-Z. I'm younger than um, Kevin Lyles. I'm younger than Russell. I'm, young, all of, I'm younger than all of these dudes. I'm younger than Teddy Riley. I'm younger mm -hmm. than all mm -hmm. of these guys. I might not be young by much, but mm -hmm. I'm younger than them, yeah. right? So therefore, my audience is younger than them, mm -hmm. and then I got younger artists, artists yeah. that is younger than yeah. than any artist that they got, right. which makes my audience even younger, younger. than theirs, yeah. right? So for me, I feel like the relevance part thing don't even work for me because people know me for Bow Wow, people know me for Anthony Hamilton, people know me mm -hmm. for the rap game, mm -hmm. people know me for Escape, people know me for the Brat, people know me That's for right. Crisscross, all that shit is. That's just, you, that shit is all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. You can't, I can't possibly be like, okay, well, I expect you, if you listen to Escape, you you listen to Bow Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, yeah. you, that, there's no way I possible. Matter of fact, that's the, the point. I know that's facts. Mm -hmm. Right? That's so, the point so of how great the label I, is. Uh, what'd you say? That's the point of how great the label is. You no, but I'm just saying. Escape, as a, and you could know it, Bow Wow. You could love Escape and not know like, yeah, yeah, you just can't. It's no way possible for you to be, for you to even have that conversation about me at a time, you know what I mean? Because mm. when you're talking about this person, I might be over here just in this space, right? You know what I mean? Like, and that's the the one thing of like when we talk about the R and B, you say, "How am I going into it now?" Like I said, I I I continue to keep starting at one. Um, I I live by like the clock because I think people don't understand that. Like niggas think that they get to the ten, they gonna go to twenty. You go to 20, you started back at one. You just, you know, you get the, you get the 10, you yeah. start back over. It starts at 11, mm -hmm. 20, one, two, it starts over again. And if you can figure out how to start over and keep going back to 10 and start back over and keep going back to 10, that's a, that's a gift to me or even a trick that it's hard to figure it out. Can you explain that a little bit more? I know what you're saying. But I think you need to explain that a little bit more. Because that was probably one of the bigger jewels you just dropped um, this entire... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how how much... <laughs> how much I, it was, used to be something I feared. Because it was like, you know, most people that get successful, they get way up here. Mm -hmm. Right? And most people play the game 
safe once they get at the top. Yep. Yeah. Where they like, they I'm up here. The fall, yeah. exactly. Every move I make <laughs> has to be something that keeps me up here. Yeah. As opposed to me going back down here and grabbing somebody that ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. Right. I go up here. And I leave that up there and I go back down here and I grab something that's nobody's talking about. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? So, and I and I realize that it's really just a fear thing. Like, if you're scared of it, you shouldn't do it. Mm. But if you don't have no fear of how going back down here even bothers this, right? Me working with Ari Lennox has nothing to do with Bow Wow. Bow Wow is Bow Wow. Mm -hmm. He's here. He's That's up here. That's my baby, though. I ain't gonna right? Mm -hmm. What you say? That's my baby, though. That's who? Yeah, everybody What's relax. Up? That's my friend. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> God. Hey. <laughs> Not like that. That's my people. Just, <laughs> just nobody can say something bad. Shit just getting crazy, right? Shit, I'm nobody can say God. anything bad about Ari in front of me. just trying to tell my story. I know Corey. Right, I don't even know Ari. That's all right. Hey, listen. Hey, you ain't hear Bow Voice. Like, his shit went down a little. I ain't like it. I ain't like it. Stop playing with his ass. We all love Ari. We got it. Right. Listen, we love Ari. Yeah. <laughs> My point is, like I said, I I figured that out, and I and I figured it out because I did it first. That's the first thing I did with Crisscross. Crisscross sold all these records, and I went and got an escape, mm -hmm. and nobody expected that to happen. Nobody wanted me to do that. People at Columbia thought I was crazy. Like Jermaine, what are you doing? You got the rappers, you got to mm. come with more rap music. And I'm like, no, I want an R&B group. Mm -hmm. When it got the R&B group, got them going, boom, they going, go find a female rapper. At a time when female rappers is not selling records. And this, this, you have no, you, this could not possibly work, right? You go do brat, boom, jagged edge. You just keep, you just keep starting at one. And, I don't feel like if you start at 10 with an artist, that's where all the, all the, all the hopes and dreams is let out of the air balloon, you know? Because like, if, if I would have had, you know, wouldn't have gave Bow Wow his own space and tried to put Bow Wow on a Jagged Edge record or some shit like that to break him um, I would have never really seen his audience. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel like that's another thing. Like I, 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 I try to make sure all the artists get their own audience. They get their own people. They get they let this. This is what's going on, right? And you know, um, like when we so I'm so I'm speaking about the art record. When we did the art record, I told her I was like, yo. Well, I found a sample. I'm like, listen, you know, there was girls on Instagram. I I seen you say this too. All y'all be saying, y'all get in the mirror, y'all be like, this, that pressure, mm -hmm. right? I said, watch, every girl gonna do this when we make this song. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you think so? Mm -hmm. That's like, a good impression. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yes, listen. And and so I know people be seeing me post all these videos of these girls. And it's like, that shit is amazing to me because these girls, this, this is not nobody asking, this is not a promotion play or nobody right. this, these girls every morning I wake up it's 10,000 mm -hmm. girls posting that song yeah mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like that shit is wild to me mm -hmm. and once again I still feel like that's another I feel like she's another one that's in that space that's not you know they are not really talking about it this is a, you know this, yeah. this is this this is a this a real record but that's mm -hmm. that's numbers versus what we see on the internet with the bullshit cuz that's doing numbers it's just not on the bullshit. Yeah, side. but I mean, I mean, I'm not even talking like, about the numbers. I'm just saying just about the fact that, like, when we talk about, like, when we talk about R and B music, that's a pure R and B record. Hundred yeah, percent, absolutely. You know, what I mean? ain't no rapping, ain't no, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Ain't no rap shit in the. She ain't trying to rap. She's singing. Mm -hmm. That's no, a pure no, R and B no, she's record. Singing. Yeah, <laughs> she's singing. Yeah, she's singing. It's a pure R and B record that everybody loves, and all black girls are like going crazy over the song, right? Mm -hmm. It's a black girl anthem. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like that's the, that, as long as I can make, cause I'm just answering your question the mm -hmm. long way, as long as I can make records like that and continue to keep making records like that, those are the type of artists I'm gonna reach for. It don't matter, like, you know, I, what Ari was before I did that song, none of that mattered to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where 
certain producers, they won't work with you unless you, uh, you know, bow wow. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I, I don't care about where artists is. You know, when I did Emancipation of Mimi, people told me I saved Mariah's life. I don't even realize that. Because mm. I didn't know what she was doing prior. Well, right. I mean, Christmas saved her life. Edit this. I mean, Christmas saved everybody. <laughs> edit, edit this. <laughs> Christmas is... I had to add that in there. I'm on that record. So. What? The Christmas. I'm on the record. Oh, my God. Anyway. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, Merry I'm, Christmas. I'm on the record. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're on the record. The biggest record, okay. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, so so I mean, I, that that's what it is, you know. So like, even with division, like, I, it's crazy when I first started working with Daniel. Half of my friends didn't even know who the fuck he was. They was like, "Who is this? Who are we working with?" Mm -hmm. And then it's like, "Okay, oh, I heard it. Oh, oh, they oh, kept their shit okay. private for a while. Oh, all right, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I heard this song. Oh, okay, cool, and." Mm, my mindset is, oh, this is a new canvas. Mm -hmm. It's a new canvas for me to go back to one again. Mm -hmm. One that you can really I mean? sing, too. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, if I make this one ring. Mm -hmm. He's a piece of shit, but he can sing. Oh, my God. Like, as a human, he's a real piece of shit. When they hit it, when they hit it. Oh, my God. I'm joking. He knows. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that saying, you know, I'm going to go back to one. I'm going to do that. Go back to one. Boom, and get that to ten, and that that's just my that's my that's my game. I think yeah. it's still I think it's still crazy, and I think I might have told you this when we went to Magic City. The fact that you still go to the DJ booth with the record of the artist that you're working with and give it to the DJ to play it after all of your accolades and success and the legendary icon that you are, to me that's still the craziest flex ever that you still do that and take the record to the DJ and like you'll play this. Dudes at your level, instead they're not doing that. But you know why I do it? You want to know why I do it? Why? Because I feel like <laughs> it's a gift and a curse because I have these fucking paralyzed records, right? Mm -hmm. I have records that have paralyzed DJs mm -hmm. that when I go to the club, it's a certain five records that they just automatically play. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Atlanta. Yeah. Money Anything. Mm -hmm. Like You by Bow Wow. Are mm -hmm. um, oh, they playing Usher for sure? Oh, uh, yeah, they might play mm -hmm. two they, Usher they records, right? Want. These are mm -hmm. paralyzed. To me, these are the records that paralyze you and make you, like... Yeah, you make can't get me, out of that box. Make me seem like I'm stuck in that era, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I go to the club, I don't want to hear Welcome to Atlanta. Right. Not in 2021. Right, right, right. We was in the club the other night. We was in Onyx. The other, in daytime, in the oh day shift. Oh, my God. Is and the niggas right? playing Welcome to Atlanta. Right? And I'm like, dog, it ain't even... It's, <laughs> it's just me and him in here. And, like, and by the way, we're in Atlanta. We're in Atlanta. You don't need to welcome me. Yeah, you about that. Yo, wait a minute, hold on. I went to the DJ booth. He cut that off. Oh I say, yo, God, this nigga my nigga, mind. listen, if you don't play that pressure right now, man, I need to hear pressure right pressure now. Could move in the strip club. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, and some pressure come on by, I was like, man, every girl in here. That. I did say that. I said, Jenny, I'm so fucking tired of this shit. I'm like, yo, every time I click on IG, pressure. At least like 10 of my girls. I love that. Definitely doing some type of shit to pressure. That's a dope ass But in a strip club, I'm like, yo, Jenny, look at the bartender. Look. Yeah. yeah, pouring shots up. She's singing the shit. What so. what mall did in Magic City? I was chilling. Like what what was he doing? Was what was chilling. his vibe? I was chilling. I was chilling. chilling. How the fuck y'all go without me? You See, was there that night. No, 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 no. You was there that yeah, night. Hold on. And I mean, we gonna get to what pitch you was there. You just don't. Yeah, yeah. Be, you now, don't now we about to up this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no. We did the history. No, no. Tell him you had some honey too. Yeah, you was you was there that night. You was there. Yeah, you was there. Yeah. Yeah. How you asked Golden yeah. that they was there? We was there. I'm lit right now. So yeah, nah, your attention was every you every five minutes you had somebody tapping you, a girl yeah, you tapping your head, you know, he was oh, all over. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. The book, you know, alleged he letting his shit fly. What you mean alleged? I might be the only nigga like in the history of Magic City to like go downstairs in the dressing room where all the girls be at. And like throw like maybe like fifteen thousand. Like get your 10, shit off. And and they can vouch for that. Mm. No, listen, we clear you on our show. We nigga what? To go downstairs and they change that. <laughs> like when they curl their hair around. I can make I can teach you how to make the it whole rearrange. Lace for all that. When they get ready yeah. to look good for niggas like us that like to walk in that type of Yeah. You I made it rain the down only there. nigga that ever go downstairs and do what I did. Mm. No cap. Actually, Jaden, you ain't do that. Don't look at him like that, Jaden. You never ain't do that. that. You ain't do that. Was you there? Do I, gotta, do I gotta teach them how to make, so make now, JD, $300 you gotta, you gotta go down there. 
Yeah, you got to you got to go down there and throw twenty if he threw fifteen. Nah. Because <laughs> if I hear he did that, then I'm, I'm gonna do thirty. Oh, here we go. It's going always. Yeah. Like you know. What happened today, man? I'm going to the bathroom. Uh, no, we can keep rolling. Damaris, bring the wine. It's everything, raw footage. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to the bathroom. bathroom. I'm going to the bathroom. You going to talk about your little your court case? What? Court case? Court case. Oh, this thing is wild right now. What you got going on, man? My bad. Hey, Bow, what you got going on, man? Hey, yo. What, what part of Queens you from? This is a this is a wild guy. What part of Southside? Damn. You forgot where you from. He said, from, damn, man. ain't no damn. South Side. You ain't from South Side. Yo, you forgot where you from that fast? Nah, because I You one of them monkeys that 50 posted last night. Nah, like for me, I'm a, I'm an energy, I'm an energy dude. So it's like, however, and man, you can attest to this, bro. Like, <coughs> however oh I feel is how I feel. So when I hear JD, that's that's just me always on a trip. So Jermaine always like. If you ask him, I'm, I might be like the craziest artist he's ever had to deal with, ever. Just ever. Because no telling like how my energy go, and go left and go right. But today I was just with some like, I've been in the crib for like three fucking weeks. Like, okay. just chilling. Like, off the grid, we just wrapped up a tour. So That's for me, mm -hmm. I got everything in my crib. I don't, I don't gotta leave. Mm -hmm. But That's today was one of them days where I'm like, yo, listen, these walls, these motherfuckers closing is in. like closing in on the nigga. I gotta get out, we gotta have some fun, we gotta do something. Mm -hmm. So like I, that's why y'all heard me been there. Like, okay, that's nah, just me to having to just get in my bag. Like and Jermaine, no, he like all right. If he about to pull up, he about to pull up, mm -hmm. and he definitely on some bullshit. So you definitely are me. one of the one of the the, the the guys we talk about in the culture that your history with uh, some of the, the prettiest women in our culture. Like it's yeah. it's, it's it's a it's a, it's something that we all talk about. Like Bow his his resume. Jer Jersey's it's it's in the rafters. Yeah, I mean, it I, should be. I, I, I give you that face to face. Oh, oh I spilt it. That. Nah, that's for Virgil. It's all, it's all yeah, right. no, you gave that to Virgil. Right, yeah, I respect that's that. for Virgil. I respect that. Rest in peace. Yeah, your, your resume is. I had to pour uh, some out. I respect that. Your I resume did. is. Uh, yeah, that's it's what I'm legendary, saying. though. It's legendary. Facts. But at the same time, it's a lot of problems that come with no. women. No, nigga. That's what you poured out. <laughs> it's enough here. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of issues that come with dealing with so many. Women. Uh -huh. So like you being, you know, the guy that you are. What's up, man? Like, what's where are you at today? Where is Bow at today, mentally? How's your mental health? I'm chilling. Your relationships with the women in your life. I'm having the most fun that I've ever had in my life. You sure? Absolutely. By the way, because we heard that phone call earlier, and you was on. And I was on a hundred. Yeah. And anytime I've said know, I'm chilling, yeah, I've never, chilling. I've yeah, never been no chilling. Chill going on. <laughs> That's me turned up. Okay. Off the henny. That's me wanting to like really like. I want to have fun. If I'm, if I've been going through some shit, it's like yo, it's time to turn up. Mm -hmm. And that's like I said, I've been in the crib for like three weeks. Okay. okay. Like I've been in the crib for three weeks. But so you I'm fresh like, off tour though, so you need you need that yeah, time to kind of exactly right. So mm -hmm. I'm like nah, fuck that. It's time to go crazy. I'm drinking. Let's let's turn up. Let's have fun. Let's create a vibe. Um, you know, anytime like some negative shit come my way, I, I always gotta spin that shit and go for like a positive. Mm -hmm. If I gotta go to the strip club and go kick it for a little bit, mm -hmm. watch the game, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, dance, a couple girls, whatever, mm -hmm. I gotta go do that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's better than me getting on Twitter and um. Way better. But you a Twitter Brandon. legend though. You've had some Facts. legendary tweets. But you, my G but, shit too. And, and I've learned from that shit. <laughs> You've had some legendary you know what moments on social media. And, and that's why I'm so thankful for like the Millennium Tour because certain shit gotta remind niggas. And that shit reminded me who the fuck I really am. You know what I mean? That's so it was real. like. That's why, like, for the past four years, I ain't really been on no fuck shit, no. Mm -hmm. All that, like, I'm about to be 35 next year, so it's mm -hmm. kind of like a nigga just in a whole nother, like a whole nother space. Mm -hmm. Two kids, and I'm just on some whole other, Mature. my mind's on some, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of like, I don't really be tripping no much. I really be on some, like, low-key shit as much as possible, but today y'all heard me on some, like, okay, look. Yeah. But, I've been pent up, fresh off tour for two months. I get it. I got to turn up tonight. I get you, it. You think, nice fun. Do you think you've ever had a childhood? Absolutely. You really think you had a childhood? I know I did. Absolutely. Pop okay, let football, me... did all that. When I got the call from Jermaine, like, to even come to Atlanta, was on some, like, yo, run to the fence. My mom was like, yo, we gonna, we gonna go to Atlanta, like, in, like, the next two days. I'm like, for what? Atlanta. You know, Jermaine Dupree, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Came, and that's how, like, the whole me, Jay-Z, J.D., and Brad story, you know, all came along. Okay. So. Let me rephrase the question, but say the same thing. All right. Do you think you had a childhood? 
Absolutely. Because <laughs> that's not a childhood. Even when I was like... Even and I give I, you credit. Watch this. Because we just talked about the child stars watch that never this, made it. And this. you was on the list of, wow, bad. Like, he really made... Okay. Because that's set up for destruction. Why does <laughs> Jermaine intercept this whole play? Me having a normal childhood is definitely accurate. Because even when I was at a million records sold, two, three... I didn't really give a, I I didn't really understand what the fuck that shit meant. Still not say, I would go around the office, turn off the power. I was always a little kid. I always had my phone. He'll tell you all the bullshit I ever did. Like yeah. when I was a kid, I was the worst. Like I was bad as a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like so, me being a kid, even when I was popping, that was always first to me. I didn't really I didn't really know about. You didn't realize the magnitude of the stardom, the star power. It was just fun being a kid. I mean, I saw it, but it was like. And I think that's what keeps me so humble and so real to this day is the fact that... You're not humble. What? Humble. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm not humble? <laughs> Hold on. I just heard you pop your shit for like 35 <laughs> minutes. And I ain't humble? This way y'all insert the video when he was talking about the phone. Flashback. <laughs> yeah, flashback. I ain't humble? Flashback the way he was talking Hold about when he was on the way I'm not humble? Yeah. I'm <laughs> humble. Get the fuck out of here. We just heard you pop your shit for like 38 minutes. I didn't minutes. pop my shit. Nigga, you was going But what he's saying is it was that's 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 like a ran that's like a very rare moment. He said with rare. you, you, you gonna I get do it your all shit the time. All, all, that, I, I, yeah, all the time. Every me? all every day. So let's talk about it. Everyday Mel? Ain't nobody gonna talk about it. What <laughs> we gonna talk about it? Mel back there said every day Mel said every day. Every, every day. day. I pop my shit every day. We ain't even gotten to like the depth of shit. We talking about bitches right now. Who? Whoever. That was part of my childhood what? question too. We just didn't get to it yet. Talk shit about that every day. We, we just got into like the girls, the list. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I don't want to get into the list. I don't the want to the No, no, no. I don't want to talk about the list. I want to talk about the list. No, 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 no. We ain't going right. to say no, 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 no. Yeah, we ain't okay. going to say no. I don't know how deep we're going to go. Let's let's get you here now. So I'm going to keep you here on some fuck shit, too. Because I got to, yeah, I stay for your fuck shit. You're going to stay for my fuck shit, too. No, I wasn't trying to do fuck shit. No, no. I was trying to ask about his childhood, and maybe because he fucked mad bitches too young, how did that fuck with how he deals with women now? Oh, blip. Him. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. That's why Blank, I said no, I'm no, not no. gonna be in here. No, no, you are gonna be here. <laughs> I'm gonna be, I'm gonna go get on my phone. Cause like I said, no, he was no, the I, first. We joking, first. but I'm dead ass. No, no, I'm having I'm, access I'm, to that amount of women that young. I'm dead had ass to fuck too, with your brain. Watching him, mm -hmm. like I never had my real father in my life like mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? So when I came to Atlanta, I'm like, shit, he got like ten cars. Like, got the crowd. Like, this is who I want to be like. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm seeing the kind of girls he bringing into the crib. I gotta go back to Ohio and shit, go to school. I'm like, I don't want to fuck with these girls. Like, you mixing something, right? Like, this shit crazy. Like, yeah. like I want this. Yeah. So, he was really like the first dominant like male figure in my life. So, everything that I saw him do, oh. I wanted to like yeah. mirror that But shit. he was also in nah, starting his that. career. He he was still kind of a I'm coming to the young strip man too at that I'm point. Like, he didn't know what he was doing yet. I'm double platinum on my next album. He can't be responsible. Clubs, while him and Nelly inside, I'm outside. And I got all the strippers outside of his G wagon. Mm. I'm on that type of. And time. You don't I'm, think that's affected you man, later in your life at all? Absolutely. Okay, I just want to make sure the same girls he like, I like. Because so, that wasn't healthy. Uh, but he like, this is my yeah. pot. So I'm seeing him yeah. do what he do. So you fall so, in love. Oh, that's what I <laughs> bet. So to this day, like, it's still the same oh, way. Oh, so listen, 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 no, listen, fuck all that. Listen. This was the nigga who laid it, rolled it out. I saw it, and I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. But y'all was now, this is, I want to be now, like him when I now, grow up. This is we reel back to when you ask me, is there any been a lyric where you have to explain it to a girl? I'm going to have to explain <laughs> this beginning dumb of the shit, right? Yeah, to, to, your girl. to somebody. <laughs> what is he talking about? He got all that dumb shit that he's doing from you? But, this was many moons ago. Exactly. But that, but you but can't put I, that on him. He was up and coming. But he, you was 14. You ain't, listen, he wasn't I'm supposed like, to be the father figure at that time. Like, but no, nah, but that's the thing. Like He was always... The big him and Snoop has always been my big homies. Jesus. But I spent more time around JD than I did Snoop. Me and Snoop always had a relationship and forever will. But this really like my pop. So I'm seeing the shit he doing, the moves he making. Mm -hmm. Bentley's okay, cool. When I get mine, I, I can touch mine. Yeah. I know what the fuck I need to do. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching how he moving and I'm like, this ain't like the girls back in Ohio. This shit different. He mm -hmm. got, they just. Ohio has some beautiful women. Though. That's we, a fact. Absolutely. Yeah. But the way these. This is different. Yeah, that, but this, even that, the, the, the big homie mentality. I'm like, okay, we gotta go to the strip club, <laughs> all that. We gotta go crazy. 
He, you, you ain't never realized. Jada, you fucked it all up. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. You fucked it all That's up. That's basically what he you get. Fucked you it ruined all my up. life. But I'm watching him and never go crazy. Jada, an amazing life. It's, it's a reason I'm beefing with my baby mother stopping. right now. I'm like, damn. I'm like, damn, niggas doing 30, 40, 50. Okay, when we go in, nigga, we got to do at least 40, nigga. Jada but no, you got to put that in context. When you realize your big homie when you was 14, you look back, you're like, yo, my big homie was 20. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. all right, I'm supposed to put some responsibility on a 20 year old? Yeah. But yeah. I, I understand That's what you're crazy he to just, think. He's he just looking through the lens, he's seeing, he was just watching everything JD. But you can't did. put that on, on JD either, because nah, he's knew, still trying to figure shit. his life out. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wanted that shit. You know what I mean? It was and, by, and by watching him do it, mm -hmm. that's like, if you ask a little nigga on the block, he going to tell you he got a big homie who we look up to, and he want to, you know, if not do it better than he did it. So it was like, when I watched him do it, I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, What's some babe. advice you would give to a young star <coughs> that probably is coming in around the age you did? Like, just some advice on, listen, don't do this. Stay away from that. Be a kid. Have fun. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm 34, but to this day, I still have fun. I think that's the main important thing is just to, like, really be you and just have fun and navigate your way through this shit. Because we laughing and joking, but you've seen a lot. I've seen no, too much. You've seen a lot. I was dead ass when I asked if you had a yeah, childhood. You've seen a lot. <laughs> you, you've been through, like you said, death row. So, so deaf. But I always remained a kid, like Jermaine would tell you. Like, it's been times where the same building Jermaine was like, nigga, you can't come for like a, a, a four weeks, you bad. Mm -hmm. For me just playing too much or just, I never shot away from me being a kid and, and shot away from my childhood. It was the same thing. And I think that's what kept me so grounded. That's why you laughing. But at the same time, that's just who I am. I'm going to always fuck around, but JD, you know, I never, I never believe in like a real fuck up. Like, you know, I am, but I have. Jay, he let you know He's still trying to think about like how my name this Bennett. I ain't in it. <laughs> my name Bennett. I ain't in it. Well, Jada, you got your um. You trying to dominate the ice cream game now with the vegan ice cream? Yeah. Pause. Don't do it. No, no, no. You, you know, you know, I'm you going right. No, 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 no. I'm gonna do it right I now. I gave you that. No, 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 no. He never had it. Yet. Never had it. Never oh. taste it. Oh, we got to do that on camera for the yeah, first right time. Now. Can you go grab some? Because we, yeah, we gonna go right right No, let's let's cut yeah, and set up. Right we're gonna we're gonna. But I do want to say this. Gotta move all this. We want to talk about this. Too, but no, 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 let's let's talk about cameras. What do you want to talk about here? You want to talk about Ben and Jerry's real quick, but you know. What? Fuck Ben and Jerry, nigga. I I never like. I just want to know how Ben Ben and Jerry just put out a a vegan ice cream with 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 Chance the rapper at. Face on the cover. The way I just brought him out of Chicago, don't say nothing right? I love Chance. I'm not dissing Chance the Rapper. No, the I'm just saying, I'm, I'm trying to, what I want people to understand about my ice cream, I'm vegan, right? And, 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 Chance I'm, Christian. and I'm part of a vegan community and we don't play that people just playing with our food, yeah. right? Yeah, you want me to talk saucy? I'm going to talk saucy about my food. We don't oh, play this, play, for real, this is real, because I nah, think no. like, you know, people, people be slighting vegans, like, Trust me, you know, yeah. niggas be having dinners and shit, and they be having steak, and then they'll say, well, the vegan meal, and that shit come out, it'll be a piece of lettuce and yeah. you know, hard ass cauliflower. <laughs> like, about me. give Still us about some, me. Get, yeah. put some love into what no, you're doing I hate with vegans. us. I'm vegan. You know what I mean? <laughs> put some love into what you're doing with us, and if, if, you, if you don't put no love into it, then don't even get into the business. Because mm -hmm. I feel like people see me doing this vegan ice cream, and I see the I see the wave starting to yeah of course. yeah I see of it course. coming right but I'm just telling you like this ain't like liquor this ain't like no. food no it's a community it's a vegan community of people who I made my dessert for because we deserve something good because people been I treating us yeah. like yeah. shit <laughs> myself no I'm I'm the guy I've been treating y'all like shit I'm just telling you <laughs> it's, it's, it's me so I'm just saying <laughs> you looking at him you know when when Beyond Meat came out they brought something that we Pause. deserved yeah. that felt like, okay, we was tired of eating bean burgers yeah. and shit that fall apart. Mm -hmm. We got a hamburger now. We can, you know, we got mm -hmm. shit. Like, don't just start getting in this game just to be, because it's vegan and you feel well, like it's the way. A bit. Huh? I just bought me some vegan cheese, but I'm still eating like ground turkey. Nah, right vegan now, cheese. So. Follow your heart. Long as it's, you know, long mm -hmm. as it's follow your heart. Mm -hmm. But I, you I, know? I, did. I just bought some vegan cheese. I'm just saying. I'm saying real on some real shit though. Veganism is a thing, and I, I, like, I don't, I didn't make my ice cream for people just to be eating it. I That's made it for it. us vegans who go to restaurants and have a nice dinner, two hundred, three hundred dollar dinner, and then that ain't normal. Bow Wow get a nice cake come out for his dessert, and they say, I say, well, what you got for the vegan? 
Hey, bring me some strawberries and grapes. Man, listen, man. I don't want no fucking strawberries <laughs> and grapes, okay? <laughs> right. I want some dessert, man. Right. So right. I made my ice cream. So can I try no, my ice cream? No, we need jokes aside. That's that's that is no, amazing. I have not had any. Yeah. I have not yeah. had any. I'm just saying, you're not vegan. You're not vegan. You're not vegan. You're not vegan. Yeah, but I'm trying to like... But you're not vegan. So if you don't like it... I just got vegan cheese the other day. Okay, but I'm just saying... I can't tell you. I just got to start somewhere. Yeah, but I still got ground turkey in my fucking nacho. I'm just saying for the... I'm still a nigga. You're arguing with a vegan to say you're not vegan. You're like, nah, I just got some. I'm, saying, I'm just saying for the people I'm that's crawling. watching this. Hold up, hold up. Because if Bow Wow has a reaction that, like, oh, it's nasty. He's gonna like it. I don't want He's you. To, like I don't want you to take that and think that the ice cream is nasty. It's for vegans. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. Mm -hmm. If you're not vegan, your palate different. Your palate might taste a little different, and mm -hmm. it might taste a little different to you. That's cool. I'm not. We we have the palate of the, the by flesh of slaughtered animals. My palate is. So am I gonna? Am I gonna? Yeah. So am I gonna notice the difference? <laughs> well, nigga, you I, a motherfucking vegan, I'm nigga. A, you, but what I will say is, it's gonna feel good to he you, hot. nigga. We, he been smoking. He gonna love this. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna he gonna bust this down. I'm telling you right now. No, warrior, ma.